what's up? And welcome back to another unboxing benchmark review with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today, we've got the MSI GE 78HX V13. This is the RTX 4080 version. And it is um, the most, arguably the most premium slash portable balance of portability and performance out of MSI's laptop lineup this year. Probably the best option if you want something that can fit into a backpack easily and go into, you know, a work or a class or something. Uh, this is very clearly a gaming laptop. You can turn the RGB off to fit into a business environment, but it still kind of has some gamery aesthetics. Um, so it really is geared towards the gaming community and crowd, though it can be used for business, you know, 3D work or whatever. Now, this MSI GE78 Raider, um, it really is uh, a phenomenal top of the line gaming laptop in many ways, but I would not say it's necessarily the best bang for the buck, at least not the version that I got of the GE78. They actually had big price reductions in the GE 78 HX uh, since it launched. It was originally $34.99 for the one I got plus tax. So I paid like $3,700 for this. You can now buy the GE 78 for like $2,599 with the 4080 in it. So you're gonna get very similar performance with that unit for $2,599 as this one for $3,499. So $900 less now to get this laptop than it was a few months ago when I bought this. So um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a bit, it feels like a little bit of like a kick in the teeth to me, but this one also has more RAM and more SSD space than the one that is $25.99. So for $25.99, we're looking at the top of the line i9 13980HX processor with this laptop. We're also looking at the RTX 4080, which is the second most powerful laptop GPU that you can get. Uh, and for $25.99, that's actually pretty great bang for the buck considering you're getting 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD uh, and a really high quality 240 hertz QHD plus display. So we're gonna talk about everything there is to talk about with this laptop. We've got a whole timeline of stuff that we're gonna do today. We're gonna do value comparison versus the competition. We're gonna unbox the laptop. So when we do the value comparison, we're gonna look at the top deals currently available. We're gonna look at the price of this laptop. We're gonna talk about its market pricing. Um, like I just kind of market pricing history. We're gonna talk about the very best competitors versus the MSI GE 78 HX, including the GT 77 Titan, which I've also reviewed, the Legion Pro 7i, the Legion 9i, uh, which is just announced and just coming out right now. Um, and then we've got the Omen 17, we've got the Scar 18, Scar 16, Blade 16, Blade 18. We're gonna talk about how the GE 78 matches up against all of those laptops. We're going to analyze and review the ports. We're going to uh, enter the BIOS and review the BIOS because there's a lot of functionality in the MSI GE78 uh, BIOS. We're going to test the keyboard and mouse. We're going to do display test. Uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to do everything over again. Even though I did a partial unboxing for this laptop, uh, I didn't feel like I did everything in one video. And I want everything to be in this video. So this is going to be the complete and total review for the MSI GE78, uh, at least assuming that everything goes well. So I would invite you to like the live stream. Uh, I would invite you to subscribe if you're interested in laptop and gaming tech reviews, because we've got some, we're gonna do not just gaming laptops, but we're gonna do desktops. We also got like VR and just game reviews in general. Uh, but I see a whole bunch of people in chat. Thank you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into our top deals. Uh, that's our first segment and then and, and value comparison and then we're going to move into the rest of the unboxing i'll give you a quick preview of the box for the ge78 so we're about to unbox this guy it's a pretty fancy looking box in my opinion at least especially compared to most of the laptops i've been unboxing recently i've been doing a lot of budgety laptops lately so it's kind of cool seeing a colorful kind of holographic ish box it's not quite holographic but it is very colorful um Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into our value comparison. So this is my uh, list that I work on with my, my team. We update this list daily. It has all of the top deals on gaming laptops. So if you're looking at the best value gaming laptops, they are right here at the top. And this is updated daily with the best deals out there. Uh, this is just like looking primarily at this GPU performance per dollar or just rough GPU performance that you're getting uh, along with potentially the quality of the screen, factoring all of the things in 
to what makes a good gaming laptop for the money. And that's basically what we have here. Uh, and my top two picks right now out of this group is gonna be the Asus Tough F15 with an i7-12700H RTX 4070, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and a full HD 144 Hertz, 100% uh, sRGB display. So that's a much higher quality display in terms of color gamut and it was reasonably bright. I think it was about 300 nits brightness when I tested it. Um, I did do a review of this one if you want to check it out. But uh, if you're after a budget gaming laptop around $1,100, this is probably the best pick right now. This thing was on sale for uh, $9.99 at one point for like a couple days and then I think it immediately sold out. So I don't know if it'll ever go back on sale to $9.99 in the near future, probably for Black Friday. But this is currently, I think, the best deal uh, going on right now. Normally this is priced, I think, at $13.99, so this is $250 off. Uh, HP Victus 16 i5 13500 HX, RTX 4060, 16 gigs of DDR5, 144 hertz full HD for 987. So if you're after an RTX 4060, this is a good option right now um, if you're after that. Now, I've reviewed the HP Victus uh, and not this specific unit. Um, it's, I, I've, I've done the Omen 16. It's nothing like super high quality, but it is gonna give you decent bang for the buck. And right now it's one of the very best bang for the buck machines uh, on the market. Now, let's talk MSI GE78HX. These are the different models you can get of this specific laptop that we are reviewing today. And uh, the, the actual model that we have here is basically like this one, but we have 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, that's the main difference here. So two terabyte SSD, 64 gigs of RAM. Um, well, actually, and we have the 13980 HX instead of the 13950. So not quite, none of these quite match up perfectly with what we actually have uh, on hand here. But the top of the line version comes with the RTX 4090 for uh, 3759. There are a lot of different places you could potentially um, check out, but 3799 right now is about the price for the 4090 version. A bit steep um, when you compare to the other 4090 version uh, laptops out there, which we're gonna go over all of those here in a moment. Um, but the version that I would recommend as a reviewer and someone who's just, you know, like this is the best bang for the buck out of the, this lineup, the MSI GE78 with an i9-13980HX, so the best CPU from Intel, RTX 4080, it's 175 watt GPU. This one comes with 32 gigs of RAM for $25.99. It's, as far as I know, it's still the same quality display, which is really great value for the money. Um, so $25.99, quite a delicious option, in my opinion, if you're after uh, after this laptop. So this is, the, this is the price right here. Huge price reduction from the beginning of this year. Originally, $900 more with slightly bumped up SSD and RAM specs. So it's come down five, $600 roughly in terms of equivalent value. Now the top competitors to the MSI GE78 is gonna be the Legion Pro 7i. This is gonna be uh, like a mix of budgety, some premium features, good build quality with Good specs, not quite as good as specs as what the GE78 has. We've got the i9-13900HX, which is basically a lower bend CPU compared to the 13980. RTX 4090 in this for 2649 right now. It's on sale, 32 gigs of DDR5 5600, one terabyte SSD, so very similar display, but the display is actually brighter, but lower color gamut. That's probably the biggest difference in terms of the display. Uh, it's like a trade-off in my opinion, if you're more of a graphic designer or doing uh, any kind of like professional work with colors, probably better to go with the GE78 because of the better quality display. But, uh, but for general usage, it's really not that big of a difference. Now the HP Omen 17 i9-13900HX RTX 4090, 
32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and QHD 165 hertz, 300 nits display. Certainly a lower quality display on the Omen 17, but the value's here because it is also cheaper. Um, now, the thing about the, the Omen 17 is we've seen the RTX 4090 version go under $2,400 when it's on sale. Right now it's $2,599, so uh, yeah, I think we've seen it, I think we saw it as low as $2,250 on the biggest sale of the year so far for a 4090 version, which is just insane. Um, so you can wait for that kind of sale for the Omen 17, but that's definitely the cheapest 4090 that we've seen so far all year. But Overall, the Omen 17, I like the feel of the keyboard when it's the mechanical clicky keyboard, uh, and then the port selection's great. Overall, I, I did like it. The cooling system on the Omen 17, not quite as intricate or complicated, but it got the job done in my review. Um, and I did review this Omen 17, and I can recommend it if you get it on sale and you're really looking for more of like a budgety value proposition, the GE78 certainly has more bells and whistles in terms of RGB colors, uh, display quality, um, CPU quality, because uh, you know it's, this is the lower bend processor on the Omen 17 as well. Um, now, before we continue, I was just checking chat. Uh, what's up, LSP? What's up, everybody? Uh, Albasius. Tough A15 4060 for 1200 euros. Uh, could be good, Albasius. I think that the thing about that one is that um, you're in Europe. That's a huge factor in terms of price. Everything usually costs 20% more over there because of the tax issues. So I would say that that's probably a pretty good deal. Uh, Rishab K says, I opened Lenovo Lock to reapply paste, but now temps are reaching 100C and above 90 no matter what task. Like, I also apply it again. But same thing, what am I doing wrong? I would encourage you to uh, look at what paste you're using, how much paste you're using, uh, the pressure, maybe you don't have the, the pressure correctly distributed across uh, your CPU and GPU, because you really need the plates to sit down evenly on the CPU and GPU, otherwise it cannot conduct the heat off of those uh, CPU and GPU into the heat pipes uh, or vapor chamber of whatever laptop you're using, and it can't dissipate the heat. So you really wanna make sure those are locked down. Um, why gaming laptops are a lot cheaper in US than Europe? Mainly because of the tax situation. Um, the European Union charges, I think like a 19% trade tax is one my, my understanding. Um, and the USA just has some uh, advantages in terms of the trade agreements, um, especially since a lot of the manufacturers and companies basically target the USA market and try to deal in higher volumes and all of that here in the United States. So uh, that's also a part of it. But, um, but yeah, as far as I know, the tax is the primary reason. Uh, Acer Nitro 5, 165 hertz IPS, 12, 650H, RTX 4060 GPU, 16 gigs of DDR5, Windows 11 Home for 1099. Not a terrible deal, but not necessarily an amazing deal, Austin. If you're in, especially in the United States, uh, I feel like you could get better a better deal than that. The GE78 was one of the most expensive 4090 laptops in Australia, way more expensive uh, than the Legion. 4080 is 1K more expensive than the Pro 7i with the same GPU. That used to be the case even in America. It used to be um, like $1,000 more for the GE78 uh, versus the Legion Pro 7i. It was like $24.99 for the Legion and like $34.99 for the GE78. And now... Things have come down, they're much closer. The GE78 with a better processor, better display in some ways, um, and potentially you could you could argue it has better build quality or other premium features like Windows Hello included, uh, you know, and it's only $25.99 now. So the GE78 is way more attractive from a price versus value perspective. I think MSI realized, wow, we really priced things a little bit too high. Let's bring the price down uh, and they've they've certainly brought it more in line with the other laptops on the market. So the GE78 certainly looking a lot more attractive. Let's continue our compare uh, price comparison versus spec comparison. SCAR 18 and SCAR 16. So the SCAR 18, um, if you're comparing it with a 4090 versus 4090, pricing is very competitive. Of course, the 18 inch chassis being bigger. I would say the RGB is very similar. Uh, between the SCAR 18 and the Raider. 
Um, I think the primary thing about the Scar 18 uh, is just the display size is bigger and it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the display, which is some people are gonna really love that. Um, but we have the same high-end CPU. Um, the other downside I think for the Scar 18 is the slower RAM speed, 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM. That's just not as fast of a RAM speed. So a certain CPU and RAM sensitive games might perform slightly worse with the SCAR 18. Um, let's talk Legion 9i. Now this is the new super premium, super hyped up in my opinion, and probably worthy of the hype, I think, Legion 9i. And it's got the highest end processor, which was not available with the Legion Pro 7i. So 13980HX, RTX 4090, 32 gigs of DDR5 5600, but you can get it equipped with DDR5 6400, which is how I ordered it. And it was almost delivered today, but I wasn't here at the house when it was arriving. So uh, it'll be coming Monday, according to UPS. A one terabyte SSD, and the, the display is also arguably the best display out of every display out on the market, at least according to uh, Lenovo's spec sheet. Um, so this is a 3.2K, which, um, and it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So it's, it's, it's like, it's like 3.2 by 2000, I think on the, the specs. Let me see. Do we have the resolution here? Yeah, 3,200 by 2,000, a mini LED 16 by 10, and it's gonna be really fast response rate, 100% Adobe RGB, 100% P3 color gamut, and 1,200 nits HDR display with G-Sync. So that's arguably the best display that money can buy in a gaming laptop right now, the Legion 9i. But other the other specs in the Legion 9i are, um, comparable to the, the Raider series, except for the RAM. The RAM speed's really where the Legion 9i might get a performance advantage. Otherwise, the CPU and GPU are gonna be the same. Um, so if you're looking for the most premium laptop right now, the Legion 9i might be it. Uh, the, the other potential most premium laptop, in my opinion, is gonna be the Blade 18. Um, at least if you want really big. If you want more of a medium size, the Blade 16 could also be a very comparable ultra high-end uh, premium laptop. So let's talk Blade 16. Now you can get this equipped with the, the top 13980HX now at launch. You could only get the 13950. Now you can get the 13980. Um, RTX 4090, you get a 4K 120 hertz mini LED thousand nits display. They can also flip down to 1080p um, or full HD plus, which is 16 by 10, and it's 240 hertz. So if you need to do fast Twitch response gaming, you can do that. Um, and it's supposed to be a dual native display where both resolutions are crisp. So very interesting display technology, very expensive. Same for the Legion 9i. This, um, my, the Legion 9i that I ordered cost me 4750, which is insane. So 4750 for the Legion 9i is just crazy. Um, more expensive than the Blade 16. Legion 9i being the most expensive laptop right now. Um, Blade 18, which is the laptop that I have been using for the last 10 months, not 10 months, uh, seven and a half months or so. <clears throat> I have been loving the Blade 18. Uh, the speaker quality is insane with it, and that just really helps me get more immersive in my games that I play. The display is really high quality, and... Uh, it's got the 13950 or 13980HX CPU and a the thinnest, most portable 18-inch laptop. That's the primary draw for me with the Blade 18 Plus. The Blade 18 has excellent port selection and uh, build quality on top of that with the best webcam in a gaming laptop. So you combine all of those things together and makes a big difference to me as a streamer if I need to use my webcam for streaming, uh, video calls or business. And then when I actually play games, I really love it. Um, so that's kind of my thought on the Blade 18 is that it's still probably one of the very best, most premium laptops out there. Um, and from a design perspective, I just really like the unibody aluminum chassis. That's the other standout feature for me. So the Blade 18, being arguably the most expensive laptop money can buy. I did not pay $49.99 for mine. I'm, that's the 64 gig version. 
Um, I think I paid 4,400 plus tax, so I'm 4,600 or something like that with tax. GT77, i9-13980HX. This is the big brother to the GE78. It is the design philosophy for the GE78, okay? The, the GE78 design philosophy is we want all the performance in something that's moderately portable. And the design philosophy for the GT77 is I don't care how big it is. I just want it to go fast in all of the games with the, the highest end everything that it can come with. And so the GE7, uh, the GT77 has uh, three SSD slots, PCIe Gen 5 support, which also the Raider series has. Um, the, uh, you can do up to 128 gigs of RAM. With the GT77, you got a four fan system instead of only a two fan system. Um, and then of course, it's a 4K 144 Hertz mini LED display uh, with the GT77. So the GT77, phenomenal value. Uh, if you get, uh, not phenomenal value, but phenomenal. Um, the step, like it's really about the 4K display in my opinion with the GT77 with arguably potentially the most cooling potential of any laptop, at least in theory. But in, in, in practice, I would say it's on par with the, the very other best laptops out there. So um, fully mechanical keyboard here, very deep travel, Windows Hello on the GT77, um, and arguably the best port selection except for the Alienware M18. Um, I really like the GT77, but it's definitely not for everybody. And I think that uh, if you're looking for something that's more portable and a little bit smaller, that's where the MSI GE78HX comes in. Uh, Cause it is more portable. It's a, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display on the GE78 um, and potentially arguably more premium in other ways too, like the QHD 240 Hz display. So if you're a gamer that are like, you're an esports gamer, then the GE78, I think, has some, some things that are make it more attractive. But it entirely depends on the user. Now, next up, we have the Zephyrus Duo 16. This has the new Ryzen 9 7945HX CPU, and we've got two Ryzen, uh, Ryzen-based laptops here at the end, the Duo 16 being a dual screen, awesome experience. I've, I've used it. The main issue I have with this is just the position of the keyboard on the laptop itself, there's no wrist rest and that's a deal breaker for me. So I cannot use this laptop, but if you're okay with this, then I think a lot of people would really like this, this uh, Duo 16. Um, I, really liked, I really liked it overall. Uh, I, I did, I mean, I, there's not too many criticisms I can give of it, but it is arguably, potentially, the most premium laptop from some perspectives because of the dual display nature, if that is helpful to you. It also has a mini LED QHD display, just like the SCAR 16, um, and it does look really good. I, I really enjoyed using this laptop. The port selection on this is also pretty weak. It is pretty portable. The performance is really good with the Ryzen 9 7945 HX in mini games, but in the games that I play, Intel usually wins with the exception of the Asus Strix Scar X3D. This is the new Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D CPU. And so this is the uh, Scar 17 chassis from last year, but with the updated RTX 4090 and the best gaming processor from the Ryzen 9 series. Now, uh, basically this is the best probably the best gaming processor, and it would probably beat the Intel i9-13980HX in even the games that I play. So if you're after the best CPU bound game performance that you can get, then the Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D is probably it. Um, so that said, I don't think that the CPU performance on this is light years ahead of the i9, and that's probably why I'm not that drawn to this. Um, plus, I just I, I think that um, I think that the build quality on my Blade 18 is just better. So, uh, and I think the build quality on the Legion 9 is probably also a bit better. Um, 
overall, the Scar 17, of course, very nice laptop. Only DDR5 4800 on the RAM. The other downside with the Ryzen 9 7945HX X3D, and I've not reviewed this yet, but my understanding is that because it has a larger cache for gaming, then the performance in other areas of the CPU can be slightly reduced. I That's what the notebook review, um, notebook check, uh, notebook review, I can't, yeah. That's, let me just look it up. I need to check this again. Uh, notebook, let's see here, SCAR 17X3D. Um, let me see if I can find it. Not Ultrabook review. Yeah, notebook check. All right. So if you want a review of this one, for now, this is probably the review I would recommend. But, um, but essentially, this is very good, but the the CPU uh, is is my understanding is that it did not do as well in Cinebench R23 when I read this review. So that was the main drawback of this Ryzen 9 7945HX. Um, but let me see if that is true. I just want to verify because I don't want to say something wrong. Yeah. So we only got uh, thirty two thousand. They only got thirty two thousand seven hundred and and 82 in Cinebench R23, but in the SCAR 17 with the regular, not X3D, they got 34,000. So this is 1,300 less than the Ryzen 9 7945HX. So in regular multi-core rendering, basically four to 5% less performance. That was, that was probably the main downside of but you get a little bit more gaming performance with the additional cache. So um, that's basically one downside, one reason why I probably not gonna get this. This is like the Scar 17 X3D for me is the kind of game that you're like, this is like the pure esports gamer that wants the most possible frames per second in something like Warzone. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm looking at the RAM speed, DDR5 4800, and I'm going, that's also going to bottleneck you in other ways. So I would really love to see this Ryzen 9 7945HX X3D paired with DDR5 6400 RAM speed. And then you're probably talking about the ultimate esports machine, most likely out of the current hardware, but we currently don't have a laptop that offers that. I don't even know if we'd have something compatible with that RAM speed, but probably at least 5600, DDR5 5600 with clo like CL40 RAM timings, if we could get that, that would be perfect. Um, or probably the best overall CPU performance all around. So that's the, that's the breakdown of the field right now out of all the top premium gaming laptops um, that I have reviewed uh, and can potentially recommend currently. All right, so are we ready? Let me check chat, chat is popping off okay wow there's a lot of chat that i have not read uh am i going to get the scar 17 x3d for review i'd love to get that um i really would but uh i currently just can't afford to buy it right now um and maybe i can get asus to send me one that would be really awesome i should ask asus to see if they'll send me one um ghost says do you think a 4080 on the g18 with no 49 available would be great for high fps 1080p ultra 60 for like four to five years. Um, Ghost, yes, I do think it's gonna last probably 45 years at 1080p on high ultra. Um, you look at the laptops with the second best GPU from four years ago, you're looking at like the RTX 2070s and those things, they can still game pretty dang well. So um, so yeah. Timmy Tech, what's up? I just bought the Legion 7 with uh, 4080 after a re lot of the research was the best decision. Great machine, super powerful, great thermals. Great, man, I'm glad you got that. Um, okay. Okay, checking here, checking mine, to do, do Okay, I'm gonna try to read a little more of the current chat. So you guys are talking with each other, okay. Just give us that X3D as an option on the Legion 9i and it would be amazing. Yeah, that would be really cool. Situation is better than... Uh, am I gonna review the Vector GP78HX13VI? So I did the, the Vector GP68 with the RTX 4080. I, I have not done 
don't have the GP78. I don't think I would do that because the only difference between the 68 and the 78 is that it's one inch larger. So probably not worth me reviewing. Um, Rishab K says, so I apply a little force on the thermal mobs to make sure it makes contact. Also, I spread the thermal paste myself or just a pea size and let it spread itself. Um, you should be able to just put a, you know, the pea size amount, let it spread itself. Make sure you get the best quality thermal paste. Um, probably something like, um, like, like the thermal grizzly conduct knot, something similar to that is probably what I would recommend. Um, but that's based on the research I did a couple of years ago. So I'm not sure what the current best CPU paste is, but that's probably what I recommend. The main thing is the screw when you're screwing everything back together. You want to make sure that the screws are, uh, not overly tight, but you know, tight enough to make sure that the pressure is being applied down. Um, When's the Legion 9i arriving? It should be here Monday. They tried to deliver it today, but I was at the gym working out. So I missed the delivery. Um, MSI laptops are way too ugly to buy this year. They must really change the design. What? I think the GE78 looks pretty dang amazing with the front RGB. You're crazy. Um, so Austin says, uh, oh, you attracted your message. You're asking about the Nitro 5. And I did answer your question already, Austin. Um, basically, the Nitro 5, I thought you could get a better deal. I didn't think it was that amazing if you're in the United States. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> LP's Oreo ice cream cake says, what do you think of the new Hershey's chocolate cookies and cream widget on Windows 10? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? <laughs> you crazy. All right. Uh, cool. So to review one last time, this is the laptop that we're reviewing pretty much basically this one, but with 64 gigs of RAM instead of 32. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. We've got all of this stuff to cover. So we've got to get, go ahead and get started. Here we go. So here's the box. You can see all the way around. Nice. All right, so we have an extra piece of um, cardboard there. The laptop is in this nice cloth wrap. Got this second layer and then we've got all of our pieces of paper here. Okay, so scan and get benefits now. MSI quick guide. All right, so there's your quick guide to the laptop. You can pause that and read that if you'd like. Um, this is the, the warranty right here. And I have confirmed with MSI that this warranty does transfer to anyone that buys this laptop. And I am indeed trying to sell this MSI GE78 uh, after I finish this review. So if you're interested in buying this laptop, please know that the warranty transfers and I am trying to sell this laptop for a very competitive price. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I suppose I should mention that I have a bunch of laptops for sale for anyone that's in the market for a used laptop. So let me go ahead and back this out. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Now, there we go. All right, so here's the power brick. You can see that we've got a 330 watt, 330 watt Ciccone brick. And uh, it's very important to recognize that this brick is smaller than the GT77 brick. And it even has the same power plug as the GT77. So I don't know why 
MSI didn't include this power brick with the GT77, but they didn't. And um, yeah, so this one is a better power brick. It's about the same size as the Asus power bricks, um, but a little bit bigger than the Razer and Legion power bricks. We also have a power cable. Let's go ahead and see how long these cables are. All right, so stretching it out, it's about six feet long for the power cable. And we've got this nice Velcro strap. Go ahead and take this off. And this cable, uh, this cable is probably only about four feet long for the, uh, for the, from the power adapter to the laptop. Overall, it's a nice power uh, brick size. There you go. All right, so we're plugged in there, but let's go ahead and take the laptop out of the fabric now. Voila. So, um, let me go ahead and set the box to the side now. Let's go ahead and do our um, quality control check on this laptop. So we have a metal top lid with a plastic rear casing back. So this is plastic, this is metal. If we open up the laptop, you can see that we have a metal keyboard deck. I like this, it feels very rigid. Uh, there is a little bit of plastic. We got plastic on this hinge right here. Uh, as well as going around the laptop display. This has a plastic bezel right here. Um, we also have a Windows shutter right here for, the, sh uh, for the, the webcam. And that will also disable Windows Hello if you have that blocked. Um, now for the keyboard and deck, let's go ahead and do our flex test. So going around from the left to the right, there is no flex, just a tiny bit of flex, and basically no flex in the middle. No flex, a little bit of flex over here. Very minimal, like no flex over here on the back, which is usually over here, almost all laptops have a good amount of flex. Like no, nothing, nothing. No flex, a little bit of flex over here on the right side. So two, a little bit flexy right here and right here, but I'm pushing down hard. You never would really push that hard normally. A bit of flex coming in here in the middle. This is usually the weakest spot on most laptops. I gotta say this is, feeling pretty rigid overall. Um, here's the keyboard layout. I like this keyboard layout. Uh, we'll talk about more in detail and we're gonna go through all the different RGB options here when we get into the software. Um, so let's go ahead and just do a quick key check, making sure all the keys press, everything is pressing fine and feeling good. This is a, a nice soft press quiet keyboard. They still have a nice little actuation force to the keys. Uh, and I do like the font that they used on the keyboard itself, like the J and everything. It's very easy to read. Um, and I think it looks quite stylish. Um, I really wish that the number pad was bigger and was positioned in a more traditional number pad format because this is a little bit smaller, a little bit scrunched. But they did feature the two speaker arrays on the left and the right. So you can see there's MSI in the speaker grill right here on the left and right sides. Um, which is kind of a nice little touch that's kind of hard to notice. That's not too uh, aggressive or anything right there. Now we do have a we do have a sticker here. Let's zoom in on the sticker. All right, so MSI Overboost, which means that it can do I think 250 watts of continuous power. We have a six speaker system set up in this laptop, which is more than the GT77. So you have a slight upgrade to the speakers, at least in theory. Uh, there are dedicated subwoofers, two of them, I believe, and then four, um, four normal speakers. Uh, I think maybe two of them are tweeters and then two normals. I'm not sure exactly how the speakers work, but I do know that there is a subwoofer in this laptop for sure. So there's, this should have good bass. Uh, you get Thunderbolt 4 support, um, HDMI, 
99.9 watt hour battery, which is the maximum and uh, matrix display support, meaning that you can do up to three displays out, no problem. Um, and Cooler Boost 5 and dis discrete graphics mode with a MUX so we can turn off the, uh, we can turn off the integrated GPU and go directly to the dedicated GPU for more performance, um, which is great. Now, um, we have another sticker over here. We got MSI Overboost, 5.6 gigahertz on two cores, 5.2 on all cores. I don't know that I don't, I've not seen that level of performance typically. Um, <laughs> At least not under all core when all 24 cores are activated. Core i9 and RTX 4080 in this. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the ports. Uh, if, if you want to talk to me, just email me, gizmoslip at gmail.com. So that's my standard email. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't just give away stuff if that's what you're trying to ask. That's what most people are, when they DM me, that's usually what they're asking for. Uh, but not all the time. Sometimes it's just questions and stuff and I usually respond and answer what I can. Um, okay, so let's see if we can get the camera to pick up the ports better. There we go. All right. So on this left side, we have our Thunderbolt 4 full-size SD card slot and our headset port. And then this is our speaker vent right here for the downward firing speakers. Uh, we also have our fan exhaust on the left. Notice, notice it's quite a beefy large fan exhaust, like kind of what you'd expect. Along the front, we have our RGB implementation, which I think looks really good when it's turned on. Uh, and then along the right side, we have our other speaker grill two USB-A 3.2s, and then we have our USB-C with DisplayPort uh, right here. Now on the back, we have more ports. We have our power adapter port, and of course our, our, our ventilation grills right here for our exhausts as well. So four total exhausts uh, going on the left, right, and two on the rear. And then we have our power port, another USB-C with DisplayPort, HDMI 2.1 and our ethernet port. Um, and this is a downward facing ethernet port, which means you, you're you gonna have to reach down and grab it. I usually prefer it when it's facing upwards. So that's a little minor um, criticism right there. Okay, so. This red thing, I'm sorry, Timmy, that's funny. Yeah, so I, I would agree that this red line, I, I feel like this red line would be better if it was just RGB. So you could change the color or turn it off, make it neutral or clear or something. This would look really awesome if this was RGB. That, I'm not going to lie. But, um, or I think I would have preferred a gold trim. I don't know. Not sure exactly what I would prefer there, but yeah, this red line, I do agree this could be changed uh, and the design would be improved by it. Just cause um, I like laptops to be able to be, uh, I guess, ambidextrous. You can use them for work, you can use them for gaming, you can take them to schools um, and not, you know, I don't want it to like stand out too much. I want it to be able to, I mean, I want basically, if I'm gonna go into a business meeting with a bunch of corporate execs or something, which I have done many times. I usually prefer to not broadcast that it's gamery, you know? So I, I think many people prefer that. Just going in for a job interview, doing work in school. They like it when they can be gamery or not be gamery. So um, Wes says, MSI laptops often come with potential hinge issues. I disagree, this, this laptop has a new hinge design. I do think that that was in the, that, that, that is a truth in the past. And I actually had a laptop hinge fail me um, on, it was like a, what was it, 2000? It had a GTX 1060, I think it was a Stealth, MSI Stealth. 16 inch or 15.6 inch, or maybe it was a 17, like, Stealth 17, I think it was a 17, 
VR, Stealth 17 VR or something like that. Um, and I actually had a hinge fail me, me on it. Um, after it took about three and a half years for it to fail. Um, but what happened was the glue came undone. That was holding the screen display together. And, um, and basically it needed to be re-glued to keep the, everything together. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think that's just not great, uh, in terms of design and to rely on glue to keep everything together. is not a good idea, uh, for long term. And I, and, uh, and MSI has since basically said that they have fixed the screen issue by redesigning the hinges, um, redesigning their, their practices. And I personally believe them, especially about the GE78. Um, ultimately, time will have to tell because a lot of laptops have hinge issues. I've seen Asus laptops lenovo laptops all have failed hinges um so it, it's possible to happen on any laptop and usually it's either the metal tears away or the glue comes undone almost every time i ever see it come undone so but i i think the design on this new laptop for the ge 78 hx is really good for the hinge and i don't think we're going to have hinge problems, but only time is going to tell, right? So we'll find out over time. Um, that's the truth about every single tech product out there, but I believe this design is good. Okay. So we've got all this, all of the screws are out now. Let's see if we can get this laptop apart. Um, so, let's see here. So to start with, we got to get this black uh, trim off of the back before we can take the bottom of the laptop off. And you got to go underneath this gold trim, looks like. See, I don't know why they didn't use, use this gold trim on the red part. That would make this laptop look better. Just use the gold trim from the back put it on the red. Uh, from a style perspective, I would have liked that better personally. All right, so there's the back. All right, so there's the plastic back fully taken off. All right, so now we can go ahead and I'm just gonna verify all the screws are out that I can see, everything looks good. All right, so now we gotta to try to get the main part of the chassis to pop up. What's up, Origin? So I'm starting with the back of the laptop. I don't usually do this from the back, but it's this, uh, this tuck down and around design that makes me kind of want to start it from the back, but removing this laptop 
back is is definitely harder than average. And it's certainly, I think, a, a point of, uh, I guess, criticism I would give on the laptop is that this back could be easier to open. And other laptop manufacturers have definitely done, I think, a better job making them more accessible this year especially. Though it really depends on the laptop. This is not the worst to access laptop I've had. But the GP series has been pretty difficult to open for quite quite some time. Okay, so there was the laptop. Let's go ahead and set this guy up into the AM right here. My space bro reading some <laughs> literature, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of oozing some liquids. Anyway, uh, link in the description to Into the AM if you want some cool t-shirt designs. I highly recommend them. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the internals. Uh, yeah, and the, the link to Into the AM is 10% off if you use the link. So good deal there. Okay, so here's the internals on this laptop. You can see the 99 watt hour battery fills up the front half of the laptop. It's quite large uh, and I do love that. Now we are 64 gigs of RAM are here. We have our M.2 storage right here and we have an empty slot uh, right, right over here. Let me go ahead and turn the exposure up just a little bit. There we go. And let's see if we can check out the brand name for this SSD. Um, so this is a Samsung two terabyte SSD. All right. On the left and right sides, we have our big speakers. So you can see that there's like an arrow and basically the sound comes out and emanates exiting the laptop from either side, basically uh, outward. Um, and then of course we have our upward firing speakers as well underneath the motherboard here. So that are on the left and right side of the keyboard deck. You can't see those here. Um, but they, they are there. Now our Wi-Fi chip is right here. Let's see what our Wi-Fi is. It's an Intel Killer AX1690i. Intel Killer AX1690i. I believe that's a, a good Wi-Fi chip, but the Killer chips to, to me have had driver issues with them. That's the only downside. Um, and... Uh, like occasionally the software from MSI ends up blocking the ability to play a game or two here and there. All right, so we're gonna unplug the battery here um, and then we're going to go ahead and take off the memory shroud and take a look at what memory we have. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. Battery is unplugged. I must plug in the battery. Chat, do not let me forget to put this laptop together without plugging in that battery again. Please help me. Okay. Okay, so when you're lifting this up, be careful because there's some sticky on the bottom. All right, here's our RAM. Double-sided. And refocus again. There we go. So we have SK Hynix 32 gig um, 2RX8 PC5 5600. But because these are 64 gig total, 
capacity. I believe the rated spec is only 5,200 RAM speed with the Intel i9. Now, if you, you might be able to overclock these in the MSI BIOS, I'm not sure, to get them to go to 5,600 5, even at 64 gigs of RAM. Might be interesting to try to, to do that, actually. But, uh, but those are the RAM's sticks, at least in this unit, which are a nice little upgrade. Okay, let's go ahead and put this shroud back on. All right, I felt everything click back into place. Let's go ahead and put the battery back in and then we'll evaluate our thermal system. There it is. Okay, so our heat pipe layout you can see we have um, four exhausts, one, two, three, four, and we've got an extensive heat pipe system. We have a dedicated heat pipe over here for the GPU VRMs that goes out the back. We've got another dedicated GPU heat pipe that goes out this left side, which is technically the right side when the laptop is upright. Um, and then we've got going on to the right, a shared heat pipe across the GPU, then hitting the CPU and going out this right side. Uh, and then we've got dual shared heat pipes here that go across the CPU and the GPU. Um, and those ones basically uh, are going to really distribute, like these three right here are going to really help distribute the cooling load across both of the fan fin systems because we need to access the heat fins on the fan exhaust on all of the different sides of the laptop to distribute the heat. Um, and I think this cooling, this is, this is a very ample cooling system design. We also have a dedicated CPU VRM heat pipe over here on the back uh, of the CPU. So quite, quite extensive. And um, this should, uh, at least in theory, allow excellent cooling for the GE78 um, in the vast majority of circumstances. Does this laptop have liquid metal in it? Sudden Sunset, no, it does not. It uses, a, my understanding, this is not confirmed by MSI. I think I actually did email them and ask them about this, but they basically um, use something similar to the Honeywell, uh, like, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's like the PT... M7950 or something like that. It's like a thermal interface material that should last a really long time. And it's like a phase change material where when it heats up, it conducts heat really, really well. And then when it cools down, it becomes a little bit harder. So uh, in theory, that material should last a really long time without needing to be replaced anytime soon. So that's a nice thing about this. Um, liquid metal should also last a really long time. So I'm not sure which one's technically better. I would say, I would guess liquid metal probably cools the laptop a little bit better, um, but not by a lot. But this, the nice thing about this one is that in theory, it should be long term. If it, if you get a good initial pace job on the laptop, you shouldn't have to change out that pace. The the, the PTM paste anytime soon. Now, I don't think this actually uses that Honeywell PTM paste officially. My understanding is that uh, MSI uses a proprietary in-house paste that is just very similar to it. Uh, and it's technically not a paste, it's like a phase change pad. So it's you actually cut it out and put it onto the, the processor and GPU. But, um, but yeah, that's my, that is my current understanding. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong uh, and we need to update that, then I will try to do that in the, uh, the pinned comment, if there's a pinned comment. Um, okay, so I actually, when I'm putting this back together, I'm realizing that I actually need to make sure that this bottom lip right here, the front of the laptop, I gotta put that in first. So, Carla, is someone at the door? 
No? Okay. Okay, so that is in. Now we'll snap in the rest of the sides of the laptop. Um, Brian Guintero says, Brian Gizmo, how are you? I bought the Tough F15 for $1149. Any recommendation? Do you know? I want to know if it was a good purchase or not. I think um, the 4070 for $1149, I think, is a great value. Um, right now, it's probably the best value out of the budget laptop segment, around $1,100, $1,200. $1, but that, all that said, the Tough F15 with a 4070 was on sale not too long ago for only um, $9.99. And it probably will eventually go on sale to $9.99, maybe on Black Friday or something again. Um, that's the only downside. But I, even at $11.49, I think it's a pretty dang great deal. So, um, okay. So I'm pretty sure that we're all snapped in all the way around. Uh, for this headphone adapter, I did have to open the laptop display a little bit and squeeze down on the keyboard deck to get this little gold piece to flip in there. Um, but it's all connected and snapped together. Let's go ahead and put the screws back in this bad guy. Counter-Strike 2 is out. Yes. I am excited to check it out. I'm not, it's, there's only, I think, four maps right now. I heard it was a pretty underwhelming release launch. So, um, but I am excited to check it out. I have thousands of hours of Counter-Strike 1.6 and Counter-Strike Global Offensive t game time played. So, yeah, I am excited to check out that game. You know, I, I actually, uh, yesterday, I was playing Halo Infinite campaign for basically the first time. I mean, I played it for just a few minutes, like a couple months ago, but for the first time actually playing through the Halo Infinite campaign, and at least the first couple missions are really good. I was like, this is shockingly, like surprisingly good. Um, good storytelling, good gameplay, um, but now I'm just entering the open world section, and that's where I hear it gets repetitive. So I don't know if it'll stay good or not. We'll have to see. Uh, I, I don't think that I'm going to love the open world section of it, so I probably won't even do everything that's in the open world because it'll probably get too repetitive. But if it's um, fun, I'll keep playing it. But most likely I'll just try to find all the story segments and kind of rush through all the story bits. Um, I've basically beaten every single Halo game uh, in existence like two or three times. And the first game probably seven or eight times. I don't know. And I've beaten every game on Legendary, too. Like, I'm playing Heroic in Halo Infinite, and it's just, like, so easy. Uh, so I'll probably switch it to Legendary. I don't know. But really fun game. Really enjoying it overall. At least the first couple missions. And I, I have it free with the Xbox Game Pass right now because... Um, all these laptops that I get, they always include a free trial for Xbox Game Pass. So I'm able to try out Halo Infinite for free because that's part of the Game Pass. So I'm like, well, I should do that before my Game Pass trial ends. All right, so we're just gonna snap this back piece into place. So Counter-Strike 2, we will be testing that today. Exciting, right? Very exciting. So let's go ahead and plug in the power adapter. I'm trying to do this blind, but it's a little bit hard. Hard to make sure it goes in the right hole. <laughs> uh, okay, all right, so let's get into the BIOS. See if I can get us into the BIOS right away. Pressing the delete key, I think that's the BIOS key. It might be F2. No, delete key is the correct one. All right, and um, 
here we are in the BIOS. Now I want to point out, I need to point out that um, we are, you, you will want to use the advanced BIOS option, which if I remember correctly is control alt shift F2. Is that right? No. Alt shift control F2. I can't remember what it is. Is it? Uh, I thought that's what it is. Do you guys remember chat? Chat, what is it? Who in chat knows what the, the MSI advanced BIOS keys are? It's like left control. Hold Alt, right control, shift, and F2. So Alt, right control, shift, F2. That's not right. <laughs> uh, okay. Alt, right control, shift, and then press F2. So, <laughs> Alt, right control, shift, then F2. It's not taking us there though. Oh, unless we're already in it. Okay, so it has to be the right shift. That's what it is. So um, now we're in the advanced BIOS. So left alt, right control, right shift, and F2. And we're going in and out of the advanced BIOS right there. Okay, so left alt, right control, right shift, F2. And now you get like way more BIOS options. We're gonna go through at least the most of the BIOS options. There's a ton of them with the GE78. So let's go ahead and just take a look, take a gander at what you can potentially do. All right, so Intel speed shift, ERP lot three, like a lot of this stuff, I'm not even sure what they do. Um, obviously hyper threading doubles up the, like makes it, duels your processing threads, um, which in theory should improve your per core performance. Um, but maybe in certain games it's better to turn it off. But anyway, I don't know. That's that requires more testing. Usually, I would say it's probably not worth it. Um, okay. Allow BIOS downgrade. Interesting. So you could re revert your BIOS if you wanted. Uh, user scenario. You can set the user scenario. Right now, it's in balance mode. I don't even know. Like I said, what all of these are. But there are a lot of them. Look at all of these. Wow. Just look at everything in here. I'm always blown away when I look at the MSI BIOS compared to all the other laptops. You know, they don't, they pretty much let everything be configurable or a lot of things be configurable that you usually are not accessible. Overclocking performance, you can enable overclocking. Interesting. For processor and memory. I'm not even sure if you can really do that much with that. Because we're already hitting, you know, we're already hitting, uh, our thermal throttling anyway. So I have undervolted this laptop in the past. Let's see here. I thought it was under power and performance. But that's the main thing I want to show you. Like the number one thing in here that people will probably want to use is undervolting. CPU configuration is that where we're looking for it? 
I have done this before. I'm just doing it. You can you can see everything that's in here. It's you can you can activate and deactivate your efficiency cores and performance cores. Um, I personally just use the laptop processor as it's designed to be instead of um, messing with that. Platform settings. Wow, this is just the, the amount of options in here is pretty amazing. But in terms of which ones people would actually need to use or want to use, I'm not sure. CPU power management control. Configure TDP configurations. So you can apply a new TDP. It looks like it's 220 watts is the power limit right now on the CPU, at least set in the BIOS. CPU thermal configuration. Hmm. There's a lot of interesting settings in here. Um, okay, so overclocking enable. Then we're going to go down to the processor. And here's our voltage offset. So here's where we would undervolt the CPU. It was just hit. You have to you have to enable overclocking in order to access undervolting. So you can uh, you can basically undervolt your processor, your E core, your ring, your GT, your on core. GT and on core, I believe, are for your integrated GPU. Um, but yeah, pretty awesome overclocking potential functionality. Uh, Okay, Brian, uh, Brian says, Gizmo, you're actually the only one that has made a test video of games with the Tough 4070. Thank you very much for the video. Your video encouraged me to buy it. Cool. Um, load line calibration, undervolt, RAM overclocking, XMP. Can't see that in the Legion without SREP. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there's certainly an advantage for... Uh, for MSI. I'm curious where the RAM overclocking is located. The real question is which one out of all of these laptops would you buy? Um, if I was trying to save money, I'd probably buy a 4080 laptop with a good screen. That'd be my two priorities uh, with probably an i9 or maybe Ryzen 9 7945HX X3D. Those are my two most likely laptops I would buy. Uh, or, um, and most likely I'd probably go with an Intel i9 because it has better display options for me. Um, so if I were to buy a laptop right now, the ones I would, I would personally buy is I would buy the best that I could get, which would probably be the Legion 9i or the Blade 18. Those are the two options, in my opinion, that are the very, very best right now, uh, I think. We'll have to see when I actually get the Legion 9i. But that's if you have like four or $5,000 you're spending. Um, if you're looking for like more moderate but excellent value, I think this GE78 could be a very viable option. Um, the Legion Pro 7i, excellent. The Omen 17, very good. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot, of, a lot of options out there. Okay, so I don't want to just keep moving around here too much, but just know there's a ton of things in here that you could go through and configure if you're an enthusiast and you care about this stuff. Um, but the primary thing 
is probably your undervolting, which is in the overclocking performance. You enable it, then you go down to your processor or e-core ring, and you go down to your core voltage offset right here. These are the primary things that you need to know if you're going to do undervolting from the BIOS. Um, yeah, I'm not sure off the top of my head how exactly to do the uh, to do any like XMP memory profiling in here. Cause it's there. I don't see any obvious settings just quickly looking through here. If I spent more time, I could probably find it. Um, but we're not going to spend too much time in here. Uh, just know that uh, you can also change other settings like your boot order priorities. If you need to like reinstall windows or something, that's also an option in this BIOS. Um, you can add an ad admin password for the BIOS. And we're just going to discard changes and exit. So know that we are not undervolted for the rest of this review. Um, we are standard only. Standard, standard uh, default values only. Okay, so this laptop display is rated for 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. All right, now it's looking for me. There we go. We'll just hit remind me later. Cool. All right. So this display uh, is a 2560 by 1600 resolution. And it is 100% of the P3 color gamut as rated by MSI. I have tested this in the past, but we're going to test it again right now. Uh, and uh, we can go ahead and do that right now. I believe last time I tested it, it was around 370 nits brightness. And right now it is there. Now it's at max brightness. You can see it's, it's, it is very bright, bright enough to potentially, you know, be, I, I think peak levels of content enjoyment. That's the key. It's, it reaches that threshold with good contrast ratios and overall um, a vibrant display. The thing about this laptop display, though, is that it is definitely not the best that money can buy. Uh, so you're compromising. When you go with this laptop, you're definitely compromising on the display quality um, at least a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and launch Spider 5 Elite. For a 2K plus laptop, this display looks quite bad. Why? Why? I don't I don't think it looks quite bad. It's <laughs> I would say the fact that it's 100%, it's like the, it's equal to the highest color gamut displays out there. Um, it's just not a mini LED display and it's not 500 nits brightness. That's, those are the two things that it's got against it, basically. But the fact that it's not mini LED also means there's no bloom on the display. So that's a pro for this type of display technology. But yeah, this is definitely not the number one display out there. So if you're after the most premium laptop display, this is not it. That's, that is definitely true. I would agree. But to say that it's quite bad is, I think, not accurate. You got to keep in mind that, you know, I am capturing this with a camera. It's kind of blowing out, every, you know, the exposure on it is really hard to get right. Um, but this display, in my opinion, looks quite delicious um and you can like i i personally would definitely be happy with this level of display quality and uh and brightness and everything except in really bright environments where a higher nits brightness is better that's the main disadvantage so if you're mainly going to be using this indoors in moderately lit environments to very you know, moderate, like, like basically not in direct sunlight, then this display is good. If you're, it's, it's very good. If you're trying to, if you're trying to use this display in direct sunlight, it's going to be really hard to see the display. 
like it is in most laptops. Like you'll probably be able to make it out kind of straining your eyes, you know, basically. Uh, but if you were to uh, have a mini LED display that can go up to like a thousand nits brightness, you'd definitely be able to see the display really well, even in direct sunlight. So that's kind of the main difference, I would say. Uh, but how many of us are really using their laptops in direct sunlight very often? Probably not that many. Uh, Wes says, is it possible to set memory timings in this BIOS? I'm not sure. I know that some other users have talked about using MSI's BIOS to tune their memory and overclock it with XFP profiles and stuff. But I, I, I have not done so at this point, and I'm not sure. Like the, the BIOS is very complex, um, and I don't want to go tinkering with settings until I know it for sure what I'm doing. But I could ask MSI and see if I can get uh, – some, I guess, instructions from them uh, on how to do it. So that way, you know, next time I can know if, uh, you know, how, how hard it is and, and what the instructions are to, to do it. But, uh, and it, maybe it's not possible, but I think it's possible to do memory timings and memory overclocking, at least in previous MSI laptops, it's been possible, but not sure about this one. Um, Okay, so we are done with our brightness calibration. Whoa, interesting. Ho, 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 ho. Very interesting. Our, that does not seem correct. I am, look at this, look at, look at these stats. I don't believe this is how I tested it last time. Look at this, look at this. it's only 88% of sRGB, 67% of the P3 color gamut. I'm wondering if we don't have our rest. Okay, we, we, had, we had sRGB set in true color. I wonder if the display P3 color gamut would yield different results. Let's try that and test again. Um, but, uh, let me make sure that you can see that basically MSI has this, uh, this true color calibrator, which allows you to, to try to color calibrate your stuff. And I'm guessing when we had it set to sRGB, it, it messed with our display stats because this is lower than I think what it tested at last time. Uh, so you can see, let's see if I can make this brighter here. There we go. So 88% 80, of sRGB. Let's test it again, but let's just check out our brightness too. 375.8 nits, 810 to one contrast ratio. Contrast ratio could certainly be better. Um, let's fire up the test one more time. Now that we are in let's there we go. Very interesting that it got significantly worse, I think, than last time. Last time it got close, I think, to the 100% uh, P3 color gamut, at least. Let me pull up my test the last time I did this. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I definitely tested better last time. So I'm thinking I'm just going to measure this the same brightness each time. Um, okay. So here is the test last time. It got 100% of the sRGB. 89% of Adobe and 87% of the P3 color gamut. Um, so it very interesting. Uh, either way, the one, one thing I do want to make clear is that the Spider 5 Elite 
seems to underrepresent the color gamut of displays by around seven to eight percent compared to most other color checkers. So I usually would consider that to be around 95% of Adobe RGB or 96% of Adobe RGB and 94% of the P3 color gamut before, like, like with my previous test. Now let's go ahead and see what we get with our second test. We're almost done doing our second test now that we've changed the screen color calibration profile. So um, Byte Media says, is it lagging for anyone else? Uh, it's not lagging. I'm not dropping any frames according to my stream. So I don't think it's lagging for anyone. So you might want to refresh your stream or uh, check your internet. But let me know if it's lagging for anybody else. Uh, Brian Quintero um, was asking, do you know if it's possible to upgrade the RAM to DDR5 4800 on the ASUS TUF F15? That comes with DDR3, or sorry, DDR4 3200. So DDR4 is usually not compatible with DDR5 RAM, so I don't think you'll be able to upgrade it. Um, it's not a huge difference between those two. Um, like DDR5 is only just a little bit faster uh, than DDR4. So it's not like you're like getting like 50% performance loss or something, but yeah. Okay, there we go. That's a better color gamut test. All right, so again, factoring in your display uh, true color profile, it really changes this value. 100% of sRGB now, 88% of Adobe, and 91% of the P3 color gamut. And like I said, 7 to 8% off with the Spider 5 Elite underrepresenting. So it's basically, that'd be, that would be 98, 99% of the P3 color gamut, um, you know, and 95% of Adobe, 96% of Adobe. So um, very high color gamut display. Let's see if the brightness and contrast changed at all. Interesting, so contrast actually went down a little bit when we added the P3 color gamut. 374.4 for the nits brightness and 730 to one. Hmm, all right. So I would certainly say overall analysis, very colorful display, bright enough for the vast majority of gamers to be happy with their gaming experience but contrast ratio could definitely be improved. Um, and you could artificially tweak the contrast ratio, but that would also probably reduce your dynamic range a bit, um, like using the NVIDIA software if you wanted to make it look more contrasty. Um, so certainly something to consider doing for this laptop display. Okay, so let's see what we got next on our test schedule for today. Um, so we've done all of this. Let's do our webcam quality check next. Uh, oops. Okay, so there's the webcam quality. Let's switch to this camera. And uh, looking at it, things are looking really dark. That's my initial impression. Uh, I believe it's a 1080p webcam. And let's go and take a couple photos. And let's go ahead and take a look at these. Uh, I would say detail is not particularly great. Uh, in this one, we can clearly read the Lumix on the camera that says GH5. Uh, we can see beard hair. There's some beard hair detail here. It's not terrible. I would say it's just like average quality in terms of image capture um, with decent detail, but really it could be a lot better 
Um, and we have seen better webcams on some of the gaming laptops out there, especially something like the Razer Blade 18. Um, so overall, the webcam, I'd probably give like a 6.5 or something like that. Like that's what basically around what a lot of the average laptop webcams are. And uh, that's certainly an area where laptops, gaming laptops can really improve still a lot. Okay. Uh, time to evaluate the laptop control software. So MSI Center is, looks like we might need to do an update. Let's see. Um, basically, okay, it looks like we're good. You go to features, user scenario, and this is the, the primary area where you can change your settings. So if I zoom in a little bit, give you a better idea on what to do here. Um, the primary settings you're gonna use here is your fan profiles. And I would typically recommend silent if you're trying to do very quiet, not bother anybody else like in the library or in a meeting or something. Balanced generally will keep the fans at a moderate level. We're gonna test the fan noise and everything with a decibel meter. Um, we're gonna do extreme performance for our main testing, because it gives the best performance, it really opens up the laptop, sets the fans to a very aggressive profile, um, and it applies a 100 core clock offset overclock. Um, but we're actually gonna be using maximum fans as well for our test for the best possible temperatures. Um, okay. All right. Um, so this is the primary thing you're gonna change here. And then the secondary, second most important thing is your MUX switch here. You have the discrete GPU mode, hybrid mode, which lets you actively switch between your integrated and dedicated GPU. But this slightly reduces your performance in CPU bound games. Um, generally, if you're gonna unplug and use the battery a lot in game and unplug a lot, I would just keep it in hybrid mode. It's okay to lose that few percent if, you need to but if you typically have it plugged in which i usually do have my laptop plugged in because usually whatever i'm doing needs to be plugged in i just keep it in discrete graphics mode for like my blade 18 that's pretty much what all i keep it in uh these days uh integrated graphics mode is really nice though i wish my blade 18 had this integrated graphics mode disables your dedicated gpu so that you can know with confidence that your rtx 4090 or 4080 in this laptop is not gonna flip on and start sucking battery juice. So um, integrated graphics mode is certainly something that uh, would be nice because basically NVIDIA Optimus just, with my Blade 18, NVIDIA Optimus does not keep my Blade uh, 184090 disabled. So it ends up draining the battery life slowly, even in like the hybrid mode. So I, I wish Blade 18 had this option. So I really like that integrated graphics mode as a, a, an option. There is a way to update your drivers in the live update section. Um, and it looks like there is an audio driver update, uh, but everything else is up to date here. Um, this way you don't have to go to MSI's website to download these things. Um, and it's really nice that they have this as an option. Um, there's also hardware monitoring in here and a general settings, which allows you to enable display overdrive, which in, uh, in theory should uh, slightly improve your response time basically in games. Windows key, disable or enable, um, switch the Windows key and FN key if you want to switch the functionality of those two keys. Interesting. Um, you can adjust your muck switch here. You can turn on and off your display crosshair button, which basically will put an artificial crosshair over the display, which I don't believe can be detected by anti-cheat software. So that way, you know, you can use a display over or crosshair overlay in certain games. Um, and there are some additional settings for the crosshair. You can download software as well that does this. But having it be on a hardware level, I think is better. I think this is software level, but I'm not sure if it's hardware or software. I think it's software level, honestly. Uh, but so, like, I wouldn't use anything like that in a tournament, but for just casual gaming, it's usually not something that's bannable or anything like that. Uh, there is Windows HDR settings that you can turn on for this display. Um, 
USB power share, hibernate sleep. So when you close the lid, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to go to sleep or hibernate? Um, close lid default, which is to go to one of these two modes or do nothing. So you can also have it do nothing. Um, okay, so that's basically the software features set. To get the most performance, you want extreme performance with discrete graphics mode, everything turned to the left. Uh, and then you also would want to activate cooler booster mode right here, uh, which if we activate that, that'll turn on max fans. You can hear the fans turning on. There is also a fan custom profile curve that you can activate for the laptop if you want to set how noisy the laptop gets for certain temperatures. So you could make the laptop be less noisy, more noisy, depending on what temperatures you want for the GPU fan or, or the CPU fan. Um, really, it's a shared heat pipe system, so it's left and right, but fan one and fan two. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do our, our fan. Uh, actually, speaker decibel meter is next. All right, let's do that next. All right. So we need to disable the max fans and also I should show you the keyboard and touchpad. We needed to go over those as well. Let's do keyboard touchpad next, then speakers. Okay, awesome. All right, um, so RGB implementation. To, to modify this cool RGB that this laptop has, you go to your Steel Series GG application. You go to the engine portion, and right here you can adjust your MSI matrix, which is in front, and the per key RGB keyboard, which is right here, the main the main keyboard. So so the Mystic Light right here, this matrix is this front keyboard section. And let's go ahead and go through those. So this is Aurora, Blue Flash, Chakra, which is my favorite, Default, which is just too much, not enough order and too fast to me. You can disable it so it looks like this laptop's not really a gaming laptop too much. Uh, there's Gold Splash. Macaw. That actually does look pretty cool too. Plain, which is one color. And rainbow, which is very similar to chakra, but it's a little bit different. I think order of colors. All right, we'll go back to chakra for now. All right, and... Uh, I do want to point out there is RGB on the back. This MSI logo does light up. It is RGB, um, which is nice, a nice added effect. Let's go ahead and just see where we change that. So inside of the settings, Inside of the settings for the MSI matrix, so you just click on this MSI matrix, it pops up here, and we can now control each individual zone to be whatever color we want. So if we just want the MSI logo to be red, we click on that zone, we could do steady, and we could pick the color, and we could just make it go red and hit OK. Um, I believe that should make it red, and there it is. It is now just red. It looks orange-ish on the camera, but that's just because of the exposure. If I go darken the exposure, there you can see it's kind of, it's. it looks very pure red to me. It still looks orange on the camera for some reason. I don't know. That's just the light of the thing of the camera. It does look pure red. Um, so nice, everything is working. It's easy to customize this. Uh, the zones, it's easy to set what uh, each of these little individual zones to be whatever color you want. Um, so you can send them to your company colors or whatever, I don't know. 
Uh, and then of course you have your per key RGB keyboard settings as well. So we've got quite a few settings in here. Aqua, Aurora, Chakra, Default, Disable, Drain, Freeway, Gold Splash, Plane. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, and we will go ahead and turn off all of these lights for this segment so we can see our RGB a little bit more clearly. There we go. All right, so one criticism I have of this, I'm turning on the screen brightness a little bit just for right now. Um, notice how the WASD keys are like almost impossible to read. Um, like when they're lit up, very difficult to read. You can easily read all of the other keys. They need to work on this RGB implementation for WASD. It's cool that they are a little bit different. I like that, you know, they're like implying this is a gaming laptop because of the way this keys are designed. But I think this could be done better still. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and do our RGB options. So Aqua. Aurora. I think Aurora looks really good like purple, green, and blue put together, basically. Chakra. Default, which is just really crazy looking. Shows off that it's a per-key RGB keyboard. Then we have Drain. The problem I have with things like drain is that I need to be able to see what key I'm pressing and it doesn't help me. Like this looks kind of cool that it turns on and off, but it's not actually very functional. Freeway, which is like a left, right kind of flash thing. Gold splash. And then plain. You can set the color too with that. Uh, and then rainbow split. So I recommend ideally, you know, matching your front light to the keyboard light so that you get very similar looking color spectrum. Um, and it does look really good. Like arguably this is the best front light look potentially of any laptop. Um, the Legion 9i, Legion Pro 7i, those have really cool looking front lights. The Scar series have really cool looking front lights. But in terms of pure front light action, this is probably the brightest and most vibrant of any of the front lights. The, the, the main issue is that this does not wrap around like the Scar series wraps around and you get more of a, a, a wraparound effect. And that's my main criticism of this is there is no wraparound effect. So it, that's the, I guess, in one way in which the RGB doesn't look as good. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard functions. I'm gonna turn the lights back on. Woo. Um. I just remembered I got a text. Okay. All right. So Keyboard functionality, I'm gonna pull this over a bit closer, get a real good look here. Um, so WASD keys are translucent. I personally am not that big of a fan of it, mainly because it makes it harder to see what the keys actually are. Um, and I think it just looks classier with everything being the same. Caps Lock has a, a light up, which is nice. 
Um, we've got a little bit smaller tilde key and the top keys are also quite a bit smaller. We have an FN lock on the escape key, which allows you to press FN and escape to switch the functionality of all of these secondary keys. So that way they work without having to press FN, which I actually really love that. And I didn't know about the laptops do that for some reason. I should have known that a long time ago, um, but I know it now and it's awesome. Uh, so I really love that. Okay, so volume, mute, down, up, disable trackpad, mute microphone, which also has a light up RGB, webcam disable, MSI center, keyboard backlight brightness adjustment, uh, screen brightness down, screen brightness up, and then our display change button. F12 has nothing, print screen, insert, delete, and then we have our number pad functionality. So we have uh, our multiplication, divide, plus, addition, and minus. And then we have our num lock button with a light up RGB or light up light. Uh, our power button, which is also RGB and is translucent. I like this, that's fine. I mean, if you wanna keep make this one translucent, I guess I'm okay with that. Uh, I'd be fine either way though. Um, and then we have our number pad, which is functional, but it's also a bit differently sized than your traditional number pad and everything's not quite the same. Some people use number pads with um, memorization of where everything is and you can't really do that with this when you have to relearn a little bit where the number pad function keys are. So just know that going into this, if you get the number pad, if you get it for the number pad functionality in particular. Under the arrow keys, we have secondary functions. I love these. You have maximum fans if you press FN, which the FN button's right here. FN plus the up arrow does max fans. You can hear them turning on. You can disable or enable the uh, crosshair with the down arrow and then play pause with the left arrow. And I believe this is put the laptop to sleep or lock it um, for the right arrow. Yeah, I just put the laptop to sleep doing the right arrow. Okay, so, um, beautiful. And you can see Windows Hello logged me in really fast there. I didn't even have a chance to really look at the laptop display. Uh, it worked instantly and definitely something I recommend. Um, I have had no problems with Windows Hello working on this laptop. It's usually worked really, really well. Uh, okay. LSP says Lenovo also have that. I believe you mean the FN lock button with the escape key. Yes, it's very nice. Reza says, I have a question not related to this laptop. I can get the Pro 7i with 4070 for 1750 in euros in Germany. Do you recommend it? That's a pretty steep price for only a 4070. The thing you gotta remember is that there's a huge performance gap from a 4070 to a 4080. It's like 70% more performance if you go with a 4080. It's really worth getting the 4080 or searching for the deal on the 4070. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good price or not in euros, but I don't think it is. Assuming it's at a 20% tax, that would mean that you're basically getting it for around 1450 USD, which I suppose is not bad if you've got a great CPU in there, but it's not necessarily great either. It's like, okay, just an okay deal, I would say, uh, Reza can probably find a better deal somewhere else, I would think, or maybe look for a coupon code or wait for a better sale. Um, okay. Next on the list, speaker test. Okay, speaker test with decibel meter. Baka says 17 inch laptop. Yes, it's a 17.0 17 inch laptop is my understanding. And 16 by nine aspect ratio display. Okay, I'm gonna turn the screen brightness down a little bit to give better exposure to my overall camera. Um, okay. 
There we go. All right, cool. All right, so we're going to put the, the decibel meter right here. Very good. Let's go ahead and looks like I need to grab my SSD here. Hold on. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in my SSD. And we'll also lift up the laptop at the same time. Uh, let's put it underneath here. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome sauce. Forty eighty is around twenty six hundred euros. Yeah, that probably translates in terms of price to performance ratio. Um, I'm not sure what the forty sixty version is, but there's not that big a difference between the forty sixty and forty seventy. It's only like a fifteen ish percent difference, maybe 10% difference. Uh, depends on the game and everything, but uh, okay. So new laptop, we're gonna play the music. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. What software do we have for our music? We have Nahimic. All right, so if you need to adjust, if you want to adjust your audio profiles in your audio software, here it is. Um, this is going to let you um, Add bass, vocal, and treble focus. You can also disable or enable it. And we can also turn our overall volume all the way up or down. And uh, right now, you can see it going up and down as I press the buttons there. Um, we're gonna have the default effects enabled because it does help add a little bit more, I think, punch to the audio. Okay, and we'll back this up a little bit. There we go. Cool. All right, so uh, first up, we have Peter Spacey Roar. Well, I gotta say, it's pretty nice audio. It's not super loud though. I don't know if you saw, but it only got about 83.4 decibels, but the bass is clear. Like it's, it's very distinguished bass. You hear that? That's the dedicated subwoofer for really helping uh, the clarity. Okay, so let's, and I would say the mids and highs stay pretty good and the bass all stays pretty good. It doesn't get all too muddled when everything comes together, which is, the good thing about these speakers, having a six speaker system and spreading out those uh, mids, lows, and highs. Uh, let's do Fade Today on Half-Life. Oh yeah, these speakers are quite good. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking 
These are probably the second best speakers after the Blade series. Probably, I think. I don't know. All right, all right. Here's a uh, Deuce Williams. La la, love you like. Okay, so mids, mids super, like the vocals, very clear, almost very minimal loss of audio quality in the mids, lows, and highs, and it is loud enough to pretty pretty close to filling a room, but it's not quite as loud as the Blade 18, the Blade 18 being louder, uh, and I think just the overall like fidelity of the lows, mids, and highs being better quality on the Blade 18 as well. So these are close, very good speakers. I think better than the GT77 speakers. This has a six speaker system versus a four speaker system on the GT77, so it makes sense. Um, and I would say these are on par, maybe slightly better than the SCAR series and definitely better than uh, most of the other laptops on the market. It's not by much, but the dedicated sub subwoofers definitely add a little bit of clarity and help prevent the sound from being all muddled. So let's move into our fan noise testing. We are going to start out in the loudest profile and move in, which is max fans. And then we're gonna move into our, um, the rest of our testing. So let's go ahead and open up Steam. Okay. Your PC Prime says, hey Gizmo, would you recommend the F15 over the Strix G16, although the Strix is more expensive by 300 with the same config? Um, for anyone on a strict budget, I would say go with the F15. And for people that aren't as quite as strict a budget and they want more of the RGB implementation and like, I'm pretty sure the Strix G16 has better speakers. Um, and I think better memory as well. There's a few different changes on the Strix series that make it better, but it's not like a, a night and day difference, you know? So um, for someone who is just wanting to get the most performance for their dollar, then the F15 still makes more sense in my opinion. Yeah, Kalen G says, DDR5 won't even slot into a DDR4 slot. The midpoint is a different where it slots in. That is correct. Okay, so uh, to do this test, what we're gonna do is run 3D Mark at like basically nonstop in a loop and 3D Mark is a synthetic benchmark that will push both the GPU and CPU very heavily like a high performance game. Um, and then we are going to test the fan noise. Uh, and we're, we're starting out in the loudest mode and we're gonna see how quiet it gets and what kind of performance we get. So let me go ahead and show you my settings. We're gonna do the graphics test two, windowed mode, looping enabled, and that should be good. Let's make sure afterburner is open. Very good. All right. Uh, real quick, I wanna give you a baseline audio level for the room. Well, it's not quite baseline because let me make it a little bit more baseline. I'm going to adjust my profile on my Razer laptop down to the balanced mode. 
um, which is going to make my blade 18 really quiet. Oop, I moved that in the, there we go. Um, very good. And let me also just close that for right now and let's put this in silent mode. Okay, so this is gonna give us our baseline audio here in a moment once the GE78 cools down or like the fans turn off. Yeah, so I'm seeing like 42, 42.4 decibels is our baseline. Let's go ahead and go into our extreme performance mode again. Maximum fans. And let's also get the benchmark running once again. Okay, so how loud are maximum fans? Let's find out. Are they really on max? Because it feels, I'm gonna make sure that they're set to max. There we go. I was like, this does not sound like max fans. Okay, here we go. Let's see how loud they are. Fifty-seven point one decibels on max fans. That's quite loud. Um, very loud. You definitely would want to game with headphones if you're going to play at that level of uh, noisiness. Let's go ahead and zoom in and check out what our temps are looking like right now. So this is these temps rep represent a best case performance scenario with a slight overclock to the GPU. We have 73 degrees on the GPU, 77, 73 on the CPU. Things are looking quite good. Keep in mind that uh, we have not undervolted the GPU or the CPU, so performance and better temperatures could be had here. Keep in mind we have an RTX 4080 in this laptop when looking at these boost clocks. So the boost clocks are staying high. Our wattage is staying high. Uh, above 170 is kind of like the target between 170 175 um, is kind of the goal for the majority of the time and uh, yeah our temps are staying quite good right now we have no laptop cooler we're in a room around 74 75 degrees Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit Fahrenheit uh, centigrade Fahrenheit combo there <laughs> Okay, so 74 degrees Celsius on the GPU right now, 84 degrees on the CPU. These temps are very good considering the wattage we're pulling through. So far, not even close to thermal throttling. I would say that uh, I would say these temps are not the best we've seen. We've seen better temps on some of the other laptops, but these are still very good temps overall. Like the Legion Pro 7i, I'm pretty sure had slightly better temperatures. Um, and, and I believe the SCAR 16 as well. Like the SCAR series and, and the Legion series had a little bit better temps. But considering the wattage pulls we're pulling through here, things are looking pretty dang good. Uh, and the fact that we've not undervolted anything. Plus, since we're overclocking, things are also looking great. Okay, so let's go ahead um, and move into 
our non max fan profile, which is going to be extreme performance with auto fans. So this is going to remove the max fans and we'll see after a minute or two what the temperatures and the fan noise go down to or stay at. So uh, essentially what we're looking to do right now is get an idea of the continued, uh, what does the performance uh, and temperatures look like as we continue to increase the load and adjust the, the fan profile down to, we're gonna go lower and lower levels of performance as we continue into this fan noise test. So we'll see. Eighth says, I thought I was the only one with the leg. I'm sorry if people are legging, I can't control that. I hope your guys' internet, I hope, the, I hope the VOD is good. That's the main thing for me. As long as the VOD is good, you can always rewatch the stream if you need to later. Um, but it might just be a connection between the EU and America right now. I don't know, YouTube servers or something. I don't know. If it, stream check, everybody. Is anyone else lagging visually? Yeah, right now it says my stream is dropping no frames, but... If it's not if it's not lagging for someone, LSP says it's not lagging for him. So that means the VOD will be good, and you'll always be able to rewatch this later if you need to. Um, okay, so we're in auto fans right now, and yeah, I mean auto fans. Let's see how loud it is. If it's any quieter, I don't know if it'll be any quieter. Still right at 57 decibels is like 56.9. So auto fans and uh, max fans basically doing the same thing. And we've had more time now to saturate the heat pipes and everything. And you can see we're still maintaining good temps. The GPU uh, 10 degrees below thermal throttling. The CPU staying looks like mainly 80 to 90. Um, range and not close to thermal throttling either. Ideally, I prefer my temps to stay below um, 80 if I can, but we have not undervolted here. And sometimes I am seeing the wattage on that CPU jump up to like 80, 90. Um, and that's when I see the temperature spike as well. So uh, as long as we're keeping the temp, uh, as long as we're keeping the CPU wattage down into the 50, 60 watts range, I think the CPU temps are going to be really, really good. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and move into balanced mode. This one should give us noticeably quieter fans. Reza says, your Listium webpage freezes on the MacBook Air M1. Tried both on my Safari and Chrome. Do you know why? I'm not sure. I test it with PCs or iPhones and on an iPhone browser, it usually works pretty well. And on a Windows desktop browser like Chrome, Firefox, Brave, those browsers seem to all work really well with Listium. Um, it's just a really complex web page with a lot of images is my guess. So I don't know. Um, if you can, maybe try using your iPhone or maybe an iPad uh, or a, a Windows PC. Wow, the fan noise on the laptop has gotten so quiet. It is incredibly quiet now. Um, let's check out let's check out our temps and, uh, and wattages and everything. Notice our CPU. Wow, our CPU in balanced mode really came down in wattage. We were doing like 60 watts in this area. Now we're only doing 35, 40. So we have gone down about 20 watts in on average for the CPU. Uh, and that's gonna significantly reduce the heat generation of the CPU. Therefore, our temps are staying in check. And notice our GPU uh, wattage also came down from the 170 range to 170, 175. Now we're doing like 155 to 160 
uh, range. And, uh, and that's also helping keep our GPU from thermal throttling. Even though the fans are very quiet, our GPU temps have come up into the low 80s. It will, the GPU will thermal throttle at 87 degrees. So we're getting close to GPU thermal throttling here in balanced mode. Notice that now we're doing 170 watts. If we thermal throttle on the GPU here at 87, we're gonna drop down in wattage and our performance will also go down as a result. I think we just throttled there, it's 86. Whenever it hits 86, usually it's gonna bounce the wattage downward. Interesting. Like we've been doing 170s sometimes on that GPU wattage and that's when our temps are spiking. Uh, so now look, 155 on the wattage and that helps our temps down. So if you were to undervolt this GPU and uh, the CPU, undervolt the CPU and GPU, you're gonna get a lot better thermal noise to your performance levels. And I have done several videos on how to optimize your laptop to get the best um, GPU and CPU undervolt. I think I even did CPU undervolting with this laptop specifically, and this laptop has an excellent i9-13980HX in it, uh, which will do a Cinevent R23 run here in a little bit. Um, and you'll be able to see that run. Though it's not undervolted now, so it's not going to be an, it's not going to be insane performance. Uh, but this was the highest CPU undervolt I was able to achieve on any of the Intel i9s. Uh, LSP says CPU clocks are pretty low. Yes, our CPU clock speed has dropped because our wattage has dropped. In balanced mode, we're obviously getting less performance than we would in the higher performance modes. The primary, the primary thing you're sacrificing in balanced mode is your CPU performance. Let's go ahead and check out our fan noise now, because uh, that is the focus of this. Wow, it is very quiet. I can, I mean, right now I can barely hear the fans. It's like 45 and a half decibels for balance mode. That is exceptionally good. Um, so the, the main issue is balance mode is kind of uh, not completely nuking our performance, but it is reducing our performance quite a lot. Um, so I would say that the overall performance level on this laptop in balance mode is gonna be decent in the vast majority of games, but uh, the more CPU sensitive games are gonna notice the biggest hits. So games like Dead Space, uh, Starfield, um, Battle, Battlefield 2142, Battlefield 5, uh, Warzone 2, those are the games where you're probably going to run run it on ex extreme performance mode instead of this balance mode. It's kind of like you either get max fans or you get really quiet fans in balance mode. Like it's almost a silent mode right now. All right, let's switch to silent. And let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay, so silent mode, notice our GPU wattage is dropping drastically down to 120. Our GPU boost clocks also dropping down to only 1860. But now these fans are basically non-existent. I, don't, I almost don't hear the fans at all. Yeah, I, I right now basically don't hear the fans. I think they're slightly whirring is the way I would describe it. Like very soft little whoosh that you can barely hear unless you like listen really close to the laptop. Uh, but we're still doing 113 watts of power through the system. We are not thermal throttling on the GPU yet. Our CPU wattage is 2830. So our CPU wattage definitely getting nuked a little bit further down because we were doing up to like in the 40 range and the high end. Now we're doing in the 31, I think is the highest I've seen so far. So overall CPU performance is certainly going down some more. Um, I would say that uh, silent mode is probably gonna be good for casual gaming. 
right? Like you're gonna play a triple A title that doesn't need super high frames per second, or you know, you don't need to, to push. Uh, you're, you can easily play the game on whatever settings you want to play it at smooth frame rates. Um, then you can probably run it in silent mode, and the laptop's still gonna run great. Uh, but you're gonna get you're gonna get noticeably more FPS in balanced mode, and then even noticeably more FPS in extreme performance mode. All three modes will have nice big gaps in performance between the three. Um, but let's go ahead and see if we're right around our baseline for our decibel meter now. Yeah, so right around, I was seeing less than 43 decibels. Bouncing down to around 43.5 was the lowest. So basically the decibel meter is not picking up the noise of the fan over my other uh, thing, other electronics running in the room um, and my like little fan that I have on the floor next to me. It's running very quietly. So uh, very impressive, very impressive silent mode in terms of if you're after something that's acoustically quiet, uh, but still pushing a decent amount of performance through the system. Um, let's go ahead and I think that's everything for the fan noise. There is, there is technically a super battery mode. <laughs> we can try putting it, we can try clicking it, but I don't, that's mainly when you're on battery mode. Whoa, whoa, super battery mode. Look at our wattage dropping down to 80. 80 watts and only 14 watts. I, th I feel like I'm looking at like the Steam Deck or something for all wattage here. Um, but yeah, so 80 watts. It's, I mean, we're even in super battery mode, we're still chunking frames here in Time Spy. Still hitting 50 FPS right now. So you can still play games. Interesting. Okay. Awesome sauce. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into our next phase of test. Uh, Cinebench R23 in Time Spy. So this is our synthetic test phase. Let's go ahead and see how, uh, what the performance looks like. We'll do Time Spy first. We'll set it to max fan mode. There we go. And uh, let's do our time spy test. Let's run the defaults. So keep in mind that we are using just the default overclock of plus 100. All right, you can definitely overclock this system more than what we are doing it right now today, but it's certainly possible. Uh, it's certainly possible to push this further, but uh, all, all, every single MSI GE78 should be able to run this level of overclock without issue. I just dropped the decibel meter. All right, looks like everything's okay. Um, okay. Okay, beautiful. Marco Lopez says, is the Katana 15 4070 i7 12th gen a good option? So I tested that. You can check out my unboxing review of it. My opinion of that laptop is that if you don't mind a low quality display, because it's a, it's a pretty low quality display, then it can be a good option if you can get it on sale. But right now, uh, Marcos, the number one laptop if you're gonna go for a cheaper 4070 is to go for the Asus Tough F15 with the 4070. I did an unboxing review of that thing. Um, performed great, display is surprisingly good quality for the money and I believe, unless the Katana 15 undercuts 
the F-15 at 11.49, I wouldn't even consider the Katana because the F-15 has a better display. The F-15 is, um, I believe, had a high, higher power limit, and those two things put together makes it better. So um, unless the Katana 15 is cheaper or the only thing available in your region or something, then I would go a, a F-15 over the Katana 15. But uh, if it's the best budget option from a value perspective, it's not terrible as long as you're okay with getting a low quality display. Fernando says, Acer Nitro 5 with i7 12650H, RTX 4060, 8 gig, 140 watt, 16 gigs, DDR5, 4800. Okay. Um, so 1174. Fernando, if that's an Amer if you're in America buying buying at American prices, I would say that's a bit high. Uh, I think you can get something very similar to that, Fernando, at maybe eleven hundred dollars or less very easily. Uh, so I would try to target something at least eleven hundred dollars or less um, for a forty sixty. Uh, but I think that um, Yeah, I think I think that you can do better than that. It, unless you're talking about like European or international markets, then I would say that's a very good deal in those markets. So our temps right now are doing really well uh, in the 60s to 70s. Fernando says, I'm from Indonesia. I just converted it to USD. Okay, well, in that situation, then I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, international pricing for a 4060 for under 1200 is that's pretty solid uh, and that's a pretty good display um, I think I think that's a pretty good display for your money and it's a decent processor good enough GPU yeah that should be a, that should be a great all-around system for you um, so our temps have come up they've saturated a bit more right now we're in the mid 70s CPUs touching the 80s Notice our boost clock on the GPU and CPUs are much higher, 5.2 gigahertz on the CPU, 2400 to 2500 on the GPU boost clock, which is obviously a lot better. And our FPS is much higher, right? We were only doing like 40 to 50, 60 FPS in super battery mode, which is the lowest FPS mode. So here's the CPU test now. Do you really need G-Sync? I don't think you need need it, but it's nice to have, is the way I would describe it. Um, it's one of those nice to haves, and you know, this MSI laptop does not have G-Sync. Wow, wow. RTX 4080 pulling 19,778, almost breaking 20K out the box. No additional tweaking. If I overclock this thing, definitely could break 20K. So, um, you know, a typical RTX 4080, you know, is looking at like 18,000, maybe 19,000 with a slight overclock. Um, so for this to get 19,778 19, is very good for a 4080. That's like full performance... Um, excellent. Uh, obviously, it's possible to overclock this further. Also, our CPU score at 17,817 is also superb for, uh, for an i9 uh, without any undervolting. If we undervolt it, we optimize some more, we could push that higher, but that is very, very good. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do Cinemage R23. So to talk about G-Sync a little bit more for anyone that's curious, um, basically G-Sync helps line up your rendered frame with the, the, with the showing of the frame on the display. And when you're at low frame rates let's say 35 to 55 range, 
it can cause a lot of screen tearing not having them all line up perfectly. And, uh, and so you would typically have to enable V-Sync. And V-Sync will work. It'll, it'll remove the screen tearing, but it will limit your FPS, basically, and, and, and increase your input latency. With G-Sync, you'll have fast input latency without any screen tearing. So it's, it's superior. G-Sync is superior to V-Sync because of the reduced input latency uh, and the fact that you get to view all of the frames, where V-Sync has to like lock your frame rate to like 30 or like 60 usually. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so G-Sync is just super, super helpful around in between like 30 to 60 range. Um, once you get above 60, you can V-Sync it to 60 if you don't have a G-Sync display to stop the screen tearing. Um, and if you're going to play a game that is, wow, 32,000 out the box, no optimization here at all, no undervolting. That's what I'm saying. Like this i9, 13980HX is insane. It's the best i9 that I've seen out of the box testing. Um, I guess that explains our time spy score too. Uh, so yeah, so I would say G-Sync. Let's finish up G-Sync, the G-Sync discussion. Uh, G-Sync is primarily applicable when playing under 60 FPS in AAA titles. So if you're a AAA gamer, I would try to get G-Sync if you can. Um, if you're an eSports gamer, eSports don't need V-Sync because, or G-Sync because you're going to run it at 200 frames per second or 150 frames per second. And at that point, you're hitting, you're, the frames are hitting so hard, there's almost never any screen tearing um, or visual issues anyway. 31474 for our second test. Let's do another test and then I'll pull up HW info. In one month I go to France. Is it better to buy in France? It might actually be worse in France uh, because of the EU tax. So I'm pretty sure Indonesian prices are not going to be that different from European Union prices. Um, but I, ha I don't know for sure. But I bet you they're in a similar ballpark, but with some brands maybe being more or less. 30,000.4. So 30,428 for our third test. All right, this test is going to be all messed up because I'm moving around. Let's get HW Info 64 up. Also, let's also install Process Lasso, which I did not install. All right, and we're just going to set the CPU affinity to above normal on Cinebench R23. So that way we're getting the best possible performance, okay? Okay, so here is our clocks. We're doing 4.1 gigahertz on the P cores. We're doing 3.99 on the E cores. Let's try that again. So 3.49 on the E cores, 4.28 on the P cores. Let's take a look at our temps. Hitting 94 degrees right now, 162 watts with the peak wattage being 176. Holy schmoly, that's a lot of wattage going through this system. 30.195. If we had this thing undervolted, like I said before, if we had this thing undervolted, I think I've scored more than 35,000 with this. I think I almost hit 36,000. I think I did hit over 36,000 with this. I can't remember exactly, but I, I monster Cinebench R23 scores when this thing undervolts, like 20% performance improvement. Um, that was with one-off runs, though, not like a 10-minute run, so keep that in mind. 29,989. And uh, let's go ahead and do one more single run. And then we'll do, uh, we'll just start a 10-minute test run. 
But it looks like we're evening out right at 30K, which is really good because usually an un undervolted i9 will even out at maybe more like 29 something, like 29.5 or 29.7 or 29 flat. So 29.6 right there. So yeah, we're evening out our score. Yeah, it's gonna basically, it's gonna chunk down to right around 29 point whatever, um, because now we're hitting our long power limit on the CPU. Uh, you can see that we're not hitting the 176 watts anymore. That's also gonna reduce our uh, performance cores and E-core clock speeds. Uh, which is going to hurt our performance a little bit. So 29,000, 29.197. But I got to say, MSI really lets this thing just fly when it's ready to go, right? When it's starting out, it's some of the highest performance. And then after, after the power levels, power limits, the long power limit kicks in, we start seeing reduced wattage. Um, and we're still seeing very good performance but it's not necessarily amazing. So, well, there we did over 30,000 and it's continuous runs right now. So um, it's just that we're looking right at the window versus looking away at HW Info. It, it affects the score just a little bit. And I'm moving the mouse around and everything too. So um, ideally for Cinebench, you don't want to touch anything on the system. You don't have anything else running, but we do this just like this every time so that we have consistent results. Um, 29,000. Let's go ahead and just do a 10 minute test. Let's go ahead and see what our long power limit is when we average it out over like two minutes. So if we were to undervolt the system in the BIOS or with Intel XDU or with um, throttle stop, you could use any of those tools with this laptop we could be seeing like 4.4 gigahertz probably on the p cores and probably like 3.6 3.7 gigahertz on the e cores so huge performance gains being left on the table if you don't undervolt the system all right so our long power limit is kicking in 139 130 watts for our long power limit that is certainly gonna reduce our performance um, from a long-term power perspective. Um, Bratzo says, I have a question. Are there any disadvantages to undervolting a laptop? Sometimes I've seen warnings of instability in the system for doing it. I wonder if it is safe to do it. So the way undervolting works is you basically, you're telling the system to run at a higher clock speed for the same amount of power, right? So like right now we're running at 133 watts and our performance level, if I were to scroll up, we're getting 3.9 gigahertz, maybe four gigahertz, right? Right now we're averaging right around four gigahertz on the P cores. So if we were to undervolt the system, what we're doing is saying, hey, take the same amount of electricity and run at a higher clock speed. And uh, basically Intel, what they do when they design their systems is they try to figure out how fast can they run their CPU cores and still be stable. And they have to establish a threshold that every single one of their CPUs can run at without crashing. And so undervolting is taking that threshold and just pushing your CPU beyond the threshold because it's an extra safety measure. Um, and when you crash with undervolting, basically what's happening is the CPU can no longer run stably. You found the you you have found the true limit of your silicon in your system when you're undervolted. So um, yeah. I mean, basically what it means is if you undervolt, you're basically making your system run more power efficiently, but
by spreading that power out across more clock cycles and therefore you get more performance for the same wattage. And, uh, and yeah, so as long as you do not push your undervolt too much, then you won't run into instability, right? As soon as you run in, run into any instability, you just pull that undervolt back down a little bit and you'll find your limit for that undervolt. And then your system should be stable at, at all times, as long as, as long as the undervolt is good. If you are still crashing, then you've pushed the undervolt too far. Um, and, uh, and yeah, no, it, like as long as in, in, in my experience, I have never damaged a system undervolting a system. Um, and I've done it now to like 40, 50 laptops and, uh, I've caused it, I've, I've caused laptops to crash hundreds of times and it's never permanently damaged the system. So in terms of safety, I think it's safe. And I don't think you're ruining your CPU any, any faster. You're just getting more performance out of your silicon because Intel has to be conservative when they set their limits so that every single system is stable. And you're just, when you undervolt, you're basically saying, I want to push my CPU to its limit, uh, whatever stability that is. And whenever you find that stability level, you've just basically dialed in your silicon more than what Intel was willing to do because they don't want to do it on a per CPU basis. They have to do it on a big batch basis. Okay, so we are averaging 133 watts of power. We're averaging 90 degrees Celsius, but we did peak at 96. Right now, 91. Overall, not terrible temps. We're not, we're not hitting 99, nine, 99 nonstop like we have seen in some, some laptops. There is some wiggle room here if we wanted to push the the thermal limit higher. Um, if we use a laptop cooler, we could definitely reduce these temps. We saw 10 to 15 degree drops with a laptop cooler. Um, and therefore you could definitely get more performance out of a laptop cooler with a laptop cooler. And then you raise the power limit. You could, you could definitely get more performance that way. And then you undervolt the system at the same time and bam, you're probably talking about like massive performance gains. So on average, doing 3.97 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.32 gigahertz on the E cores. So overall, without undervolting, CPU performance is about standard, what you expect for any i9 CPU. Um, and really, the i9-13980HX is not going to give us much more performance than the i9-13900HX uh, in these type of workloads. Um, the 13980HX, I believe, is primarily going to give us an advantage in single core workloads primarily. Um, okay, so let's move on to our next test. We already know it's going to get right around 30,000, so there's not really any point to finishing it. Um, so let's see here. I just need to keep moving. Apex Legends, here we go. Game testing, start. <laughs> okay. Steam. One thing I will mention about undervolting is that um, it may happen that over time your undervolt could become less stable. So you may need to, uh, it may be possible that you'll need to um, basically reduce your undervolt a little bit over time if you run into any instability later on down the road. But um, regarding permanently damaging your CPU, I don't think that's the case at all. As far as I can tell, I've not seen any of that happen ever. And I've not seen any users report it ever happening either. So, and uh, I guess the other thing about it is I almost never see a laptop fail because the CPU is busted. It's almost always VRMs, fans going out, hinges going out. That kind of stuff is the most common failures. So... Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and make sure that we have it plus underscore max 300 
APX Apex Legends. Let's go. This is a great game. Very competitive. First person shooter. Um, is there any safe value? Uh, well, the thing is, it's going to vary from laptop to laptop every time because that's the way silicon is. So there is no safe value, but there is common undervolting. And right now, after me having done the undervolts on a bunch of i9s, I would say that most of them can go to minus 125 to minus 150 on the P cores and then around the same, maybe one, minus 100 to 125 on the E cores. And these are mini, millivolts um, or 0.125 volts. Uh, okay. So right now we're at the native resolution, 2560 by 1600. We have everything set to low right now, except for anti-aliasing. And we're gonna go into the firing range and check out our FPS. Razer new BIOS update nerfed undervolting. Yep, that's why I have not updated to the latest BIOS. But my understanding is that uh, even though it may have nerfed the undervolting, it is possible to still undervolt with Intel XTU. Is my understanding? I haven't actually under updated it on the Blade 18, so I'm not sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and get all of our pieces of equipment attached. Okay, so low settings right now. Let's go ahead and fire away. Two hundred and eighty five FPS. This thing looks so buttery smooth. The speakers sound really loud. Probably should turn them down a little bit, honestly. I feel like my aim is off a little bit because I've been playing games with different sensitivities lately. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Starfield. And uh, like I said, last night I played Halo Infinite for a few hours. And I have not been playing Apex in a while now. Still love this game to death. Have thousands of hours in it. So we averaged 283, 172. Those are some excellent performance numbers. Our QHD resolution is 240 hertz refresh rate. Um, so we're above our, our refresh rate right now uh, for our, at least our average, our 1% low is a little bit below it. Let's go ahead and switch everything to high and ultra settings. All right, now let's go ahead and see what uh, we get on ultra settings. Two hundred and forty FPS still with ultra settings. One fifty three. So our one percent low went down twenty FPS. Overall, very very good. Obviously, um, no problems at all for me. Uh, and this would be an excellent laptop for Apex Legends with low or ultra, but uh, I like running this game on low settings typically so that I can get maximum FPS. All right, so let's hop into a match real quick and try to kill a few people and then move on to the next game. Am I gonna play Farming Simulator? Uh, that is currently not on the game list, sir. <laughs> Uh, so we've got Apex Legends, Warzone 2, Counter-Strike 2, which just came out yesterday, God of War, Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts, Dead Space, Last of Us Part 1, Starfield, Baldur's Gate 3, and The Witcher 3. So we've got like all the latest games that are just super popular right now, plus some really popular esports titles to test out. So let us continue our test. Okay.
Can you try 1080p to see if the 1% lows can improve even more? Um, I could, in theory. I don't know how much they would improve, maybe a little bit, maybe to 200. But uh, because it's very CPU sensitive and memory sensitive, I don't think we would see much performance gain. Maybe a little bit. But typically, I don't believe that we are GPU bound in Apex. Well, sometimes, it just depends. But like right there, we're pretty much frame capped to, let's see. Yeah, like on low settings, we're only doing 140 watts and 88% GPU utilization. So we are CPU bound in Apex. So it's not really, I don't know. Most, most, I mean, you might get a little bit more. It's really hard to say. But I don't think there's too much point in me trying to do 1080. If you want to see 1080 Apex benchmark, uh, you could check out the MSI GP68, uh, which is like the budget version of this machine that's also one inch smaller. It's also cheaper. So... Is the Intel Ultra 7 a good CPU? I've never seen the Ultra 7. Okay, so that just came out a day ago. All right, so here's the Intel Meteor Lake Ultra 7. Leaked Cinebench R23 has six P cores and 80 cores, 7,300 points in the Cinebench R20. I have 100 watts. Huh. Interesting. Interesting leak. Well, I mean, it sounds like it's at least not terrible, but we'll have to actually do a lot more testing to know for sure. Two extra P cores. If you don't care about battery life, Ultra is not interesting. Interesting. So is that the focus of the Ultra then? Okay, so impressive efficiency gains and boosted iGPU performance. Okay, so not a performance jump, really, it doesn't sound like, but an efficiency increase. Interesting. So maybe, maybe it'll be worth it if you care about battery life or you want thin machines. Who should I play? Let's go. Let's go Bangle Doodle. Am I going to upgrade? I, I mean, I don't think I'll upgrade to the Ultra Series right now. But it may be worth buying the Ultra Series over the existing gen, maybe. We'll have to see. Um, 
But that depends on pricing. There's so many variables there. It's hard to know. Okay, so we're hitting very close to our F uh, frame rate cap. I'm going to turn audio up so we can hear the game. All right, well, I should probably just go in here, not hang back. I'll give them some long range supported B. Oh no, someone was right above me. <laughs> Am I going to upgrade to Cinebench R24? Oh, interesting. Yeah, probably if there's a new one. I haven't seen the new one yet, so R24 is new to me. They keep changing it on me. And it's not really, the test is not really that different. So I'm just like, why are they constantly changing it? I think I want to fight him. Ah. Oh man, so close. <sighs> Cinebench R24 is a much longer test than R23. The new Cinebench more target towards data center testing. Interesting. There's so much going on here, it's crazy town. We killed one. I'm proud to say that we killed someone. Oh, we got sniped though. Okay, so averaging 264 FPS, 142 for our 1% lows in actual gameplay. Um, so that's great to see. And obviously very good performance. All right. We'll, see, we'll try to kill this guy and then that'll be it. Oh no. All right, last life, last life, and then we're going. Who's ready to fly on a zip line? I am. Moving on to the next game after the last life. Let's go ahead and throw our ulti.
Hi, buddy. Pretty sure that was our teammate helping me out there. Kill this rampart. We can do it. Oh, that rampart was so low. Oh, my goodness. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. I really wanted to kill that rampart because they killed me earlier. All right. We were suiciding. Okay, that was great. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Exit the game. Um, very good gameplay. Really enjoyed Apex Legends. Let's move on to Warzone 2. So, for context, anyone that's not familiar with Warzone 2, very CPU-sensitive, centric game. And it is a very um, RAM-sensitive game as well. So, the RAM we have in this... Uh, let's actually pull up HW Info. Let's see, I think I still have it open. I do not. Um... Let me just see. So right now we have so we have 6400 or wait. We have 5200. So our RAM speed is 5200 for our clock speed with a cast latency of 42 42 42 82 124. So our timings with a command rate of two, which is good. Um, but our timings are not necessarily the best and our ramp speed is not necessarily the best. So that might impact our war zone performance. We'll find out here. Looks like we have already finished. Where was it? There it is. Battle Royale duos. We just had it. We just clicked it and then backed out. And then it disappeared. Looks like it's a different map. I really would like it to be the normal map if we can. I don't know, maybe this is the normal map. I'm not sure. Warzone went through a big, big update recently. And uh, because it went through a big update, I don't know if it's, I don't know, uh, I don't know how that's gonna affect performance. Warzone's been really uh, funky lately with its performance levels. It goes up, it goes down, it goes all around. So uh, they like hurt Intel CPUs and then they made them better because uh, the XMG Neo 17 tested really, really well. Um, so we'll have to see what we get. Um, I have already checked the settings earlier today, but let's just verify our settings are still correct. All right, minimum DLSS on quality. Very good. Display is 240 hertz by 2560 by 1600, so our, our settings are correct. We're searching for a map right now. 
It does the hokey pokey and turns itself around. Yeah, Warzone, Warzone 2 does the hokey pokey. Confirmed. Confirmed. Um, it's finding a map. It says it's in Von Vondel. We'll see if that's the right map or not. I gotta learn the map names. That might be the correct map. Vondel, Vondel. Is Vondel the correct map? We'll find out here. I don't know, it's hard to say. The style looks very European on the map so far. So, um, expected FPS should be like 150, give or take, uh, when compared to other similarly equipped laptops. So, wow, so many players on the map right there. <laughs> what? Yeah, this map is definitely different. Not a map I've ever tried before. Where's the combat area? Oh. Oh, we didn't return to the combat area fast enough. <laughs> All right, well, we're doing 140, dropping in. Training is over. Time to see what you have learned. So Vondel is not the correct map. We don't want Vondel. Vondel is in Netherlands, Europe. So notice our, notice right now our GPU is not being maxed. Our CPU is the bottleneck. We're doing 75 watts, doing 5.2 gigahertz. Okay, so when we land here, we land over here by City Hall. Whenever we test Warzone on this map, I usually try to land over in this area. Okay, so doing 134 on this map right now. I thought that was a person for a second. I'm not sure where to go to get some guns. I can get a grenade. There, I just threw a decoy grenade. Distraction! All right, we got a gun. I hear fighting. I am hearing audio directional audio here. Let me, let me try to hear it. Someone's very close to me. The Semtex got me, even though I was hoping to get far enough away from it. I should have just kept aiming down sides. I thought he was going to stay behind the wall, and he did not stay behind the wall. So 130 FPS, 83 for a 1% low. Um, it's obviously good FPS. It's just it's um, not as high as what I've seen on the other map. That's the thing. It's the other map is the key here. And I'm not sure what's normal for Vondel yet on this CPU-GPU combo. 
Oh, you want to fight? You want to go? All right, let's go. Okay, so I have reset the FPS counter. Let's see what we get now. Dead. Dead. He died. 144.90 for our FPS. This map is like super high octane. Lots of enemies to kill. Lots of people. Hostile recon deployed. Who was this? Oh, that's a grenade! I just threw a grenade! The Q button is not what I was hoping it would be. Okay. Ooh. Sir Chad Lannister. How do I equip this? Let's load up on armor plates. I mean, this feels really good to play on this laptop, but. The FPS is certainly not what we were getting on the XMG Neo. It was doing like 170, but different map areas. So different map entirely. Very crucial to recognize. Um, but in terms of the way this feels and the plays, it's great. And the audio is very loud. Like it's feel like it's hard to talk over the audio. Oh snap. I'm freaking dead. I'm not dead. Yes. I'm actually surprised I'm not dead. Okay, that's the worst weapon. What? They're both worse? Man, this is a high octane matches. So many enemies. Oh my goodness, how do I get what I had before? Okay, whatever. Oh, he's closer than I thought. Okay, so, uh... One thirty four one uh one thirty four eighty five, very good gaming performance in Warzone two, but like I said, not quite what I was hoping for. Um, it's time for Counter Strike two. I don't know if the performance is any different in Counter Strike two versus Counter Strike one, but we'll see. And are you going to test and see what the difference is between NVMe and Intel Optane? Interesting. Um, let me see. I, did, I need to do more research. I thought Intel Optane... Whoa, what are these? Whoa. Okay, so this is Counter-Strike 2. It's very different. 
Are you ready to proceed? Brief training session? Do I have to? Okay. I guess we're doing that. Is there still a... Now is the time. B to open the buy menu. Ooh, different weapons now. New interface in Counter-Strike 2. Very different. It wants me to go plant the bomb. I gotta say, graphically, this does not look that different. I should have bought a smoke. That's what I really should have bought. Bombing. Terrorists win. Okay, we gotta do a smoke. That's really the biggest thing in my, my opinion about the change. Uh, let's grab, how much money do I have? Okay. Grab an AK, and then we'll grab a smoke grenade. We'll grab a regular grenade. We'll grab a Molotov. Decoy grenade. Okay. All right, let's try the different grenades out. Okay. Smoke grenade! Whoa. <laughs> that looks so cool. Wow, okay. And then uh, let's go with a regular grenade. Look at that. It completely blew up my smoke. Throwing a regular grenade into it blew up the smoke. The bot killed me. Came out of nowhere. Oh, uh, snap. Okay, can I go to the main menu yet? I don't want to do a brief training session. What is this? Is there any way, chat, to skip this training session? Like, I thought Intel Optane came out a long time ago. Uh, like, that was what I remembered. Okay, let's check out our video options. Full screen window. Let's go full screen. Advanced video. Default high presets, it looks like. So what is it, like, I don't understand what the t this tutorial is supposed to be doing. Like, am I supposed to play, like, a whole match before it lets me, you know? All right, let's not kill them all. Let's play, wait for the bomb to detonate. We did the murder. We'll do the distraction tactic. Oh, well, we can't let him, can't let him defuse it. Like I thought Optane was like Intel's SSD lineup that's just 
like a name for their SSDs. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. So is there any other tutorial section that I can do to get this over with? I really want to see FPS. Do you guys see an FPS option here? Ooh, wow, we won. Let's see. Here. I may have to Google how to show FPS in Counter Strike. Counter Strike 2. CL underscore FPS. Hey, there's the FPS up here. All right, let me see. All right, so you guys can see the FPS now. We're doing 399 FPS. We're hitting our FPS max. Wow. So what do we got to do to get... Let's do FPS max 1,000. It's op time. This is easy. We kill them and then we go home. Oh, I threw my op. Uh, let's go ahead and go. So here's our FPS in the top left. We're doing 400 FPS. Throwing the smoke down. We're still doing 300. 200 FPS in the smoke now. Wow, that's impressive. So that's a huge improvement. This game used to... This game used to have smoke bring it to its knees. It would like be like 40 FPS or something. Let's give the bomb to someone else. Um, so, so yeah, this laptop, 300, 400 FPS, 200 in smoke and CS uh, Counter-Strike 2. Um, first time ever playing in this, uh, in this game and it's, it's great. Like it, it seems like very similar FPS. To what it used to get, I didn't, and honestly, the, the FPS for smoke seems like a massive improvement. So what am I supposed to do? Like, like, what do I have to do to finish this tutorial? Like, I don't understand. 
how to finish Um, how to finish tutorial. Uh, I'm just, I'm just a little bit annoyed how long this is taking to get through this tutorial right now. All our teammates are dying. This is me and one other person left. So, does this, do I have to wait to just let the whole game play through, or, or what? And do I have to do this every time I load Counter-Strike 2? Do bretas. Like, I feel like this is not a tutorial. This is just a forced bot match. We have to play 11 rounds. Team. Um. Remember, this isn't a killer house anymore. This is real life. Interesting. They're not going to support, they're not going to support, Intel, you said Intel announced they're no longer going to manufacture and support new customers. Interesting. For Intel Optane? I don't know why he's asking me. I don't know why he's asking me to, to do a uh, comparison with Intel Optane and, and NVMe drives. But. So, I mean, there's not much more to learn from Counter-Strike 2. It's going to play extremely well on this laptop. That's the main thing I'm trying to learn. I will try to do this tutorial on my own after, uh, after this is done. So that way, hopefully, we don't have to do this every time. How do I exit the game? There we go. I don't know what the 1% lows were like in Counter-Strike 2 there, but it felt extremely smooth. So Counter-Strike 2, supremely excellent gameplay. It looks like a reskinning of CSGO. So like new textures and a little bit, maybe a few new models, but, um, and then the new system of smoke, the smoke being the most important aspect that they've changed in my opinion. So next up we have God of War. We need to move through these games a little bit faster. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like the FPS in Counter-Strike 2 just is gonna go up. Everything that we saw in Counter-Strike Global Offensive um, with the poorly optimized smoke system, especially just wipe that out, give it a better system, uh, and everything will be better. 
Okay, RTX 4080, 2560 by 1600, DLSS to quality. All right, and then, uh, yep, there we go. Graphics to the ultra preset, and we'll continue. All right, there we go. Okay, so RTX 4080. God of War benchmark. Here we go. We're doing 98 FPS, 70 for our 1% lows. Very good 1% lows. Just what over 100 right now. Not here, though. I'll keep looking. 102, 62, very good. Um, I can't remember, I can't remember the exact performance for 4080s in this. I think 4090s do like 116 to 125 range. So this is in line with other 4080 laptops, I think. Um, all right, next up we have, Cyberpunk 2077. Competitive players proceed to use highest possible settings for FPS and not smear. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't really use FSR in CSGO anyway because, uh, I mean, I think I wouldn't want to. I mean, FPS is nice and all, but... Like, let's face it, it's not... Counter-Strike was never that hard to run in the first place. So as long as I'm getting more than 300 FPS, there's, or more than 240 FPS at least, there's no point, in my opinion. Okay, so Cyberpunk 2077 went through a revamp recently. Slight changes to the benchmark system. And uh, I believe some optimization. They made the engine a little bit better, honestly. So I think your FPS should be slightly better than what it used to be. Phantom Liberty, bye now. Okay, so we're gonna do full screen, 2560 by 1600. Ray tracing ultra, frame generation enabled. We're gonna set DLSS to balance, then we're gonna go back to quality. Should definitely be the right settings this time, totally. <laughs> uh, sometimes it just doesn't do it correctly for DLSS. Uh, okay, here we go. Cyberpunk 2077. That'll be a boom for iGPU users. Oh, I suppose, I suppose that IGP users might have struggled to hit proper FPS, and now they can get at least, you know, 60 to 90 maybe or something with FSR. Um, FSR 3, I've heard some positive things about. I'm hoping FSR 3, basically FSR 3 allows frame generation like gains, but for non RTX 4000 series GPUs. So I'm hoping, my hope is that FSR 3 will come to a lot of games and will be awesome, but I am not sure about the implementation of that yet. Um, mainly because it'll apply to all laptops, AMD and NVIDIA, and it'll uh, just bring more FPS to all gamers. So why not? I love it. Um, 99 FPS right now. 43 for 1% lows, 177 watts going through that GPU, uh, 85 watts going through the CPU. Our temps on the CPU getting a little spicy. GPU temps are really good though. 99.96 um, FPS on average, 26 for the min. Uh, overall, that's obviously very good. Let's go back to the main menu. We'll hop into a section. 
So that's obviously going to be extremely playable with no issues. Yeah, 43 for a 1% low is very good. I mean, it's not it's not very good. It's just okay. It's better. It's very playable. I wouldn't say it's very good, sorry. Um, but it's definitely decent. We've seen worse. Let's hop into a little combat section. Do 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 do. LSP, I'm just struggling for time right now. I know you're always all about that. Um, okay, so here we are in a combat scene. Whoa. They definitely changed some of the, the lighting in this. Uh, wow, the lighting is so much darker now with ray tracing on Ultra. Like the windows are all closed. You know, it's amazing. Our FPS benchmark was uh, 99, and we're getting 101 on average. So, very similar FPS. Oh, my goodness. Oh my God, I should mute this. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Okay, we're gonna kill this guy and then that'll be our test. I gotta say the game seems like more dark and more surreal now with this engine 2.0 update. I like it actually. 101.45. The game feels very good. I mean, there's a little occasional, you know, on the frame time graphs, there's these occasional blips, but I mean, I'm not really noticing it much in the actual gameplay uh, here and there, I guess, but the vast majority of the time is very smooth. All right, so moving on to our next game, we've got Hogwarts. Grenades and meds are now based on a charge system. Oh, that's nice. Um, I like that, actually. Ben Fitzpatrick says, Hey, Brandon, I have a 2060 version of uh, Legion 5, Ryzen 7 4800H, and upgraded to a 32 gigs of RAM. When would you suggest I upgrade it, as I'm not sure on that? Um, it just depends on the games you play, what resolution you want to play at. Um... If you're playing mainly older titles like The Witcher 3, a 2060 will still play The Witcher 3 really, really well. So, uh, But if you want to play a game like Starfield, I don't think a 2060 would probably play it well at all, even on the lowest settings. So um, it just depends on the game you want to play and how much your budget is and what your money is like. But uh, a 2060, I think, could be upgraded now and have meaningful performance gains in the newest titles. Um, and I would recommend upgrading to at least a 4060, ideally. Get like a 4060. Um, but uh, I, ideally, ideally a 4080 is the sweet spot in terms of performance. Um, and I think long-term viability for uh, performance. Like being able to keep the laptop for five plus years and always be able to play games on good settings, at least medium high settings five years from now. Weapons got nerfed and buffed. Some are removed and some have been added, reworked, berserk. And, oh, nice. Uh, no min maxing weapons. Interesting. I like, I liked, I liked my cyberpunk 2077 
experience all around. But eventually, I ended up just using those sniper that could just snipe through walls and just cheese the game. And it got kind of boring. So, I don't know. That's probably my fault for playing it that way. But uh, the storyline, I did, I did beat the storyline. So here we are. Hogwarts, ultra settings, low textures, ray tracing on ultra. Let's hop into Hogsmeade and run around. Okay, so let's see what our 1% lows look like right off the bat. Yes, we are getting some pretty gnarly stutters with our 1% lows. Getting us down to 16 for a moment there. But of course, this is loading. We're loading all the textures and everything in right now in this initial run through. Hopefully, everything loads in properly. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and run back now. All right, we're going to turn around over here. And away we go. Okay, so. Wow. This is, this is great FPS. Um, this is matching like the XMG Neo, or almost matching the XMG Neo. That did, I think, 112.45. That had a 40.90 in it, though. Okay, this, I mean, Hog, Hogwarts in this area, it tends to be very CPU bound. 106.42. Um, that is exceptionally good performance, in my opinion. I mean, right now we're not being CPU, uh, right now we are being CPU bound, only 85% of the GPU, so it makes sense. Very similar performance to a 4090 laptop. Um, honestly, this beats some of the 4090s that I've tested. Uh, so very, very good performance. Obviously, the game has gone through updates. There's been driver updates, so that could also be related to the performance. But we also have the highest end. Um, you know, we have the highest end CPU here, the i9 13980HX. So that's, I think, a bigger factor than anything. Okay, very nice. Let's move into our next test, Dead Space. All right. Uh, your PC Prime says, hey, Brandon, would you recommend the tough F15 over the Strix G16? All the Strix is more expensive than $300 with the same config. Uh, your PC Prime, I did answer this earlier. Um, and my quick summary of my answer is F15 is worth it for people on a budget. I would recommend that over the Strix. But uh, the Strix G16 has 16 by 10 aspect ratio, faster RAM, and uh, also, I believe, a better quality display. And RGB lighting. So it's up to you if that's worth 300 bucks. But uh, I think for most people, they would rather go with the tough. So, but it all depends on, you know, do you love RGB? Are you willing to pay extra for RGB? Do you want 16 by 10? You know, little things like that. But the laptops themselves are about the same size and uh, similar build quality. Not too different a quality display. So. Okay, so display and graphics. DLSS on quality with ultra quality preset and video options 2560 by 1600 let's go to 240 hertz refresh rate though okay here we are very nice Data procedures. We're ready for them to play. 
So this frame time graph is always like this in Dead Space, even though it doesn't look jittery, it just looks crazy. Um, like it, it, it looks pretty dang smooth to my, to my eyes. 102 FPS. Right now we are being very, uh, I wouldn't say we're very CPU bound, but I think our frame time, 1% lows are being limited by our CPU. Um, and honestly, every single laptop I test has like 20, between 25 to 35 for our 1% lows. It's just dead space. I don't, I don't get it. It's weird. Okay, so uh, it's always like that. Okay, here we go for our official test. 103 FPS. Right now, 75, 80 watts of power going through that CPU, doing really good temps for dead space in this game. 87 to 90 degrees on that, that CPU. And uh, performance is good. Our 1% lows just tanked a bit from 30 something down to 25. So interesting. I would say 1% lows are being a little problematic right now, but they're being consistently meh. Okay, so like when I turn the camera, I'm not seeing terrible stutters or anything. That's the thing, like, I don't know if it's reading the 1% lows correctly because it feels smooth to me. It's weird, I don't know. Okay, 106, 24. There you go, there's dead space. Uh, certainly not bad performance. In fact, I would say quite good. Moving into Last of Us Part 1. Your PC Prime said, I had a nap before. Thank you very much. I hope, I hope my sweet, soft voice helped you nap. Hope you had a good nap time. <laughs> LSP says that suppressed sniper is nerfed, cannot shoot through walls. You can try new playthroughs. Yeah, so, um, I mean, you could do that before. You had different playthroughs and options before. It's not like, not like you couldn't before, you know? All right, so we're doing ultra preset with textures on medium. I believe we just do that, okay. There we go, and now we go to our display. We need to make sure DLSS is enabled and quality is selected. Okay. So we are going to do a new game. We'll start. Shaders are not rendered, but they take a long time to render in this game, so we don't have time to do them. Yeah, I did beat Cyberpunk 2077 main story, so I will probably beat Phantom Liberty at some point. But like... I technically didn't finish The Witcher 3. I have beat Starfield four times now. Um, I've played through the main story at least four times. It doesn't really take that long to play through. It only takes like two or three hours if you want to just do a quick playthrough. Um, okay, so here we are, Last of Us. Here is the cinematic now. Um, that I let play through every time. I'm gonna go ahead and play audio. Hundred and twenty six. I gotta say, our one percent low performance has not been excellent in most of the titles. I feel like our larger density 64 gig RAM might be hurting our 1% low performance by a little bit. 
Kita Side stories of cyberpunk is where it's at. Some are insane. Some will go down a deep rabbit hole. Interesting. I'll definitely have to check it out. Okay, so. I love this game. <laughs> it's just so calming. The side track, the storytelling, like the soundtrack is what I meant to say. Um, and the gameplay. Just watching this intro cinematic over and over again, I'm just like, I need to finish this game too. There's so many games to play. Okay, so now we're actually in the fully rendered game engine and not the cinematic. Optimization updates are too late. You need to finish the game before they optimize it. Doesn't make any sense. Or you, you finish the game before they optimize it. That is true. Sometimes it ends up being that way and you're like, what? Okay, so I have reset it again. Let's see how we do with our 1% lows. A little bit of stutters. We'll walk to the end of the bedroom here and we'll end it there. The Last of Us 2 ruined the Last of Us universe. Well, we'll have to see. I'm not sure. I have, I've just watched the show, the first season of the show, so I don't know. All right, one one sixteen forty six. Obviously, extremely playable. Great performance. No problems at all in Last of Us. Um, moving on to Starfield. Last of Us 2, the game. Yeah, they haven't made the show yet for the second game. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. Comments like this certainly making me nervous because I care a lot about the storyline and the characters. Honestly, the first season ended a little weird anyway, but I, I still liked it. Okay, I'll be right back. One moment. Okay. So Starfield, a game that I have reached level 79 in. This is not my latest save. I don't know why Steam is not syncing my latest saves anymore, but um, we're going to run through Aquila as our benchmark. So Aquila is one of the most demanding game areas. And because uh, there's so many NPCs. You heard of the Ellie? That's the rock. Ranger Sentry. And uh, we're going to go to display. We're going to do ultra preset with no dynamic resolution. And this is a vanilla, vanilla version of Starfield. Vanilla version of Starfield. Much, much better frame rates can be had 
if you uh, it, it, it all it takes to have better frame rates in this game is just installing the DLSS three frame gen mod, and it is just so much better. Okay. Cool beans. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start, we'll sprint until we run out of oxygen and then we'll walk the rest of the way to the entrance of the rock. Okay. Wow, 1% lows are doing pretty dang well right now. 68 average FPS, 41 for our 1% lows. That means the game is definitely playable, very smooth feeling right now. Um, but obviously you just installed the DLSS3 mod and it's like, boom, um, almost double the FPS pretty much. So 64 FPS, 36 for 1% lows. Playable on ultra settings with the preset, but install the DLSS3 mod. That's my recommendation. Or they're gonna install DLSS3 in the game uh, soon. So uh, I don't know when they're going to do it, but that is what they have said. The developers, Bethesda, said they are planning to add DLSS 3 support. So I don't know why they didn't do it from the beginning. I'm just like, what are they thinking? They should have, they should have had it in there from the beginning. All right, so Baldur's Gate 3. What's up, Britt? You're just here for the end summary. So things are going great. Um, I would say the only, the main performance issue we've ran into so far is just 1% lows in some of the games I don't think are quite as good as what we've had in some of the best performing laptops. The average FPS has been excellent, but the 1% lows are the primary area where I think faster 32 gig RAM could help boost performance in this laptop. So like the Kingston Fury. Let's go no nudity for now <laughs> on the live stream. <laughs> okay, and video 2560 by 1600 DLSS set to quality. And we're doing the ultra preset. All right, and for which game to load, we are going to load I think it's this one. So Baldur's Gate 3, probably gonna get game of the year in my opinion, um, because of the excellently written characters and great storyline. Okay, so here we are. I don't know. Okay, we'll just let this play out. Mm. Okay, we just killed them. We'll have you shoot this guy. You missed. All right. Uh, let's do a push. Where's the shove? Shove. We'll shove him. Uh, we'll need to move a little bit.
Uh, it's not working. I guess we'll just do a fireball attack that worked. All right. So right now on ultra settings, DLSS on quality, we're doing 155, 77 for our 1% lows. We are fighting a batch of goblins right now. And uh, let's just do... We go again. Oh, why is he climbing down? This is bad. This is bad. <laughs> oh, and that removed that. Okay, that's bad. Uh, let's go back up this ladder. Uh, all right. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, 155 FPS, 75 for 1% lows. Still doing great. So if you want to play Baldur's Gate 3... You're going to have absolutely no problem with this laptop. It is going to be great. All right. And let's go ahead and move on to Witcher 3 for our final game test. And then we'll do our summary of everything we found out about this laptop. Okay, let's check our video display options. Ray tracing on ultra, DLSS to quality. Frame gen on 20 by 16 by 1600, those are all correct. This bard's tale begins near White Orchard. With my dear friend Geralt of Rivia seeking his lover of yore. The with the new BIOS, my 1% lows have suffered. Which laptop do you have again, Britt? It could also be the latest uh, NVIDIA drivers. I heard they messed up some of the some of the games. I'm not sure which game you're playing, too. I couldn't remember which one you ended up buying, Brit. I saw my head. I remember you told me, but I can't remember right now. You got the GT77? Okay. Yeah, I think the biggest thing to improve the GT77 performance is getting like the Kingston Fury RAM or something like that to improve. Okay, so here we are. Witcher 3. Our CPU is kind of going a little hot there in the 90s, low 90s. 80 watts of power going through that CPU. 103 FPS, 58 for our 1% lows, ultra settings with ray tracing, frame gen enabled. One hundred and eight FPS, fifty-six for our one percent lows. I think I think we're doing really good. Um I think this is about average for the Witcher 3 in terms of 1% low performance. And overall performance, obviously, you just slip off ray tracing if you want to go to really high FPS gaming in this game. Um, and like I've said multiple times before, ray tracing, in my opinion, probably makes the game look a little bit better. Just flip that off. And look at our FPS now, 163. So, yeah, extremely smooth as soon as you remove the ray tracing. And honestly, I think the game looks just as good. Um, I gotta say, Cyberpunk looks really good with ray tracing on, though. Um, okay. Very good. There's Witcher 3 for you. All right. So, let's do a summary of everything we've found out about this laptop. Let's get the light on. Okay. Okay, so what's up and welcome to my final summary review of the MSI G 
E78HX13V. This is the RTX 4080 version with the i9-13980HX. And it has 64 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte SSD, and cost me $34.99. This laptop currently with a, with the same CPU and GPU can be had for $25.99, which is a much better price and makes this laptop far more um, appealing from a price to performance perspective, especially since it comes with only 32 gigs of RAM. And uh, since this only comes with 32 gigs of RAM, that's also going to improve our gaming performance. 32 gigs of RAM being able to run at 5,600 mega transfers, which should slightly improve our 1% low performance. 64 gigs can only run at 5,200 mega transfers, which is just not quite as fast. So, um, so yeah. Now, uh, comparing this laptop versus the competition, if you get that better price config at 25.99, this thing is very competitive, especially considering it comes with a 100% DCI-P3 color gamut display. And we tested it today at 98% P3 color gamut, which is excellent. Um, the port selection on this, I think, is very good with three USB-Cs, one Thunderbolt, one of those being Thunderbolt 4, two USB-As, a full-size SD card slot, HDMI 2.0 support. Um, one gripe about the feature selection of this laptop is that it lacks G-Sync, which can affect you if you're trying to play uh, games like Starfield, where you're getting maybe sometimes in some scenarios sub 60 FPS. And in that scenario, maybe you're going to see a little more screen tearing than you normally would. Now you flip on frame gen, you flip on some other settings. Typically, this laptop's almost always gonna be doing over 100 frames per second on ultra settings in almost every game out there. Starfield being one of the rare exceptions, at least out of the box. Once you get this thing with frame gen mod installed on Starfield, you're gonna get over 100 FPS. So I kind of gave you a preview of the performance we're getting, but we got over 100 FPS in every single game we played today and we did all of the games on ultra settings so yeah and the esports games of course got well over a hundred and like like apex legends did 250 fps warzone 2 did 140s i believe but it was a different map than normal um counter-strike 2 did 300 to 400 god of war uh, 102, I think. Cyberpunk 2077 did 100. Hogwarts did 100 and like eight or five or 105, I think. Dead Space. Uh, the, the main issue with the game performance was 1% lows suffered a little bit. We had like 30, like 25 to 30 in certain titles. Um, like... Uh, Dead Space, I think, was 25 for 1% lows. That's not amazing. Uh, Hogwarts was like 35, 40 or something like that. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 was 43. A lot of these could be improved if you just get the Kingston Fury RAM that I did a review of just recently. I highly recommend checking out that review of the Kingston Fury and watching the summary of what we found out um, because 1% low performance with 32 gigs of RAM with faster timings and uh, that's definitely going to help uh, going up to DDR4 6400 if your RAM can overclock. Definitely something I would recommend if you can if you can get the RAM uh, and it's in a compatible system. Um, okay, so gaming performance is perfect right now. Like basically, it's going to be able to play every game at over 100 FPS across the board on ultra settings at QHD resolution, no issues except for VRAM in certain titles like Hogwarts. Um, Cause only 12 gigs of VRAM needs a little bit more than that for QHD in certain, like in, in a game like Hogwarts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't think the stuttering will be bad with a game like that or the laptop like this, but uh, you can at least run high, medium or high textures in basically everything. Eventually 12 gigs of VRAM won't be enough though. That'll probably be a pretty long way down the road um, before you'll have to be turning it down to low settings. So 
I think this laptop, if you get it with equipped with a 4080 or 4090, is going to be a great long-term buy. You've got a great quality display. The main issue with the display, the contrast is not that great. It was like 730 to 1, and the brightness was only 375. But the color gamut was excellent. It's extremely colorful display, and the response rate and the resolution is great. 17-inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Really, it, to me... Uh, gives a great impression for gaming and overall enjoyability, but it's not as bright and vibrant as the mini LED displays, not as contrasty as the mini LED displays, or honestly, it's not as contrasty as many of the regular displays out there. So um, now flex test and quality control. This thing is very rigid. It feels very sturdy to the hands. I like typing on the keyboard and the keyboard has a lot of functionality with a number pad, FN lock key for the top F keys. I like that. Um, the trackpad feels really good. It's smooth. It's a glass trackpad and it has a good click to it. I think the trackpads could still theoretically improve some more on all Windows gaming laptops, but this is going to be equal to the best gaming laptop trackpads. Pretty much with Razer being one of the few laptop trackpads that may be slightly better. Um, the I did the ports already. Let's uh, the BIOS in this laptop allows you to undervolt and has lots of customization, including your power limits adjustments. I believe you can do RAM overclocking, though I'm not sure how to do that in the in the BIOS. I've never looked it up or anything, and I didn't want to do that live on the the show today. But I'm pretty sure. You can do RAM overclocking with this laptop, but I'm not sure 100%. So someone needs to look into that and then maybe I'll update a pinned comment about RAM overclocking if I can figure it out. Um, the speakers on this are really good. Like the speakers have good punchy bass. I'd say they're a little better than the GT77. They're on par, maybe a little bit better than the SCAR series and just a little bit worse than the Blade series. Uh, the Blade series just having better fidelity in the mids, highs, uh, and lows. So, and better spatial separation, I think, than this. The Blade 18 especially. Um, I would say this is pretty close to the Blade 16, but the Blade 18 is just like on another level. Uh, fan noise got 57 decibels on max fans. That's very loud fans, very loud max fans. Balanced mode, we saw a power drop. Uh, on the CPU and GPU, but the fan noise dropped down to like 46 decibels, which is very quiet for how much power we were seeing go through the system, but temperatures also rose a little bit. So um, balanced mode is probably the way most people would play this if they want reduced fan noise and still good performance. Silent mode still gave us enough performance for older titles or playing games at lower frame rates, uh, newer titles on lower frame rates, but ultimately, Extreme performance with max fans, that's gonna give you the best all around performance and it's gonna be a noticeable jump up from balanced. So I would recommend extreme performance if you can play with headphones. If you can't, balanced mode is still gonna give you great all around uh, performance with relatively quiet fan noise. Um, so that's really good. Now, Cinemetch R23, we scored 32,000 out the gate, which is awesome. We saw 176 watts going through the CPU. That's awesome. and. Um, the thing is, once, once you undervolt this, you can really unleash the beast and you can score, I think I scored as high as 35,000 something with this i9 CPU in this MSI GE78. I'm selling this one, by the way, uh, cause it has a really good i9 in this laptop. That said, I don't know if that was 100% stable and it certainly wasn't going to consistently hit that performance threshold without something like a laptop cooling pad. Uh, but yeah, so with this laptop, you tune it, you can optimize it, you undervolt the GPU, uh, you undervolt the CPU, um, you put a laptop cooling pad. This thing is just a performance monster equaling the best and biggest laptops out there. While at the same time being a bit more perfor a bit more per uh, a bit more affordable. I wanna get the lights on for this. Yeah, there we go, the lights are on now. And of course the RGB implementation and design of this laptop, I think, is top notch. My main criticism on the design is the red line. I don't think the red line looks very good. There's a red line here, and there's also a red line on the back right here. I think it looks okay if you're into black and red, 
but like there's a gold line here. Like why didn't they just do gold all around or red all around? That would be an improvement. Why are we doing two different colors for our trim? Um, and number two, I don't know. I feel like a shiny metal, like a silver here, like a chrome trim, that would just look better, look more classy. Uh, or maybe RGB. Like why can't this be an RGB strip going across here? That would make it way classier. So I don't know. Like that. At this price point, I would have appreciated a rear RGB strip and chrome instead. That would be my design choice if I could choose it. Um, overall, the this laptop is really fully featured. You got the Windows Hello and the webcam, the webcam being just average quality, but Windows Hello is really nice. A privacy shutter at the top, also a really nice touch from MSI. And, uh, and yeah, so at $25.99, I think the MSI... Raider, Raider GE78HX is a great buy. Uh, like, very good. It's, I don't know if it's necessarily like, it's not, it's not the best value per dollar, but if I was choosing between this one and the Legion Pro 7i, if they were the same price, I'd buy this one because it has a higher color gamut display and a better speaker system. And I value those two things a lot. Um, but I would say the Legion Pro 7i has a better keyboard and it, and it undercuts the price of the GE78. So when you actually compare realistic pricing, the Legion Pro 7i might cost a few hundred dollars less. And at that point, I think it's kind of a toss up depending on whether you value the color gamut on the display or not. And if you do, the Raider would probably be the better choice. If you don't, you're fine with 100% sRGB. Then I think the Legion Pro 7i or maybe the Omen 17 is the better value buy versus this one. In terms of premium, you can definitely step up to a more premium laptop display like the SCAR 16, the Blade 16, uh, the Blade 18, the SCAR 18. All of those are higher color gamut, well, equally high color gamut, but higher brightness and better contrast on the display. So if you are after something like a, you're a professional video editor and you want something super bright and vibrant, that's where a mini LED is more attractive, I think, than this. Um, but I think this is suitable for professional work to at least get a really fully featured, fully color gamut display that is gonna be really effective at uh, conveying the end game goal color spectrum of your content. Um, and there's even the True Color MSI True Color app, which lets you change the color gamut of the display. And I think this is very effective um, to switch around and make the gaming the, the display just look better or or um, a little more poppy or whatever kind of color spectrum you're looking for for your workspace. So I I like that. I think the keyboard's very comfortable to type on. It's a very comfortable laptop to game on because thermally this stays really cool. The wrist rests stay very cool. There, of course, the rear fans put out a lot of heat because there's a lot of power going through this system. And overall, can I recommend the GE78? At the $25.99 price point, absolutely. I think it's a very good system for the money, but I do think we're gonna see it go on sale too. So I think, I think we have probably like around, when it goes on sale, I'm thinking 2,400, maybe 2,300 makes this thing a really great buy. Um, at least currently as of the end of September, 2023, uh, as we go later on in the year and next year, I think we're gonna see all the way down to probably $2,000 pricing eventually on the baseline unit. But right now, I think this laptop's worth buying at the $25, $99 price point if it meets all of your needs just the way you're looking for a laptop to meet them. The number one drawbacks with this machine, no G-Sync. Um, the slower 64 gig RAM, uh, just impacting performance, and I think 1% lows a little bit. Uh, let's see here, the little bit lower quality webcam. And of course, you know, it's not a super portable machine, but it's fairly portable. So largeness of the machine being a 17 inch display, 16 by 10 though, so that's a nice advantage in terms of portability. I like the hinge, I like the build quality, a lot of metal on this laptop. It feels like 
you're buying a premium laptop and you're you're spending premium laptop money, but if you're getting the the twenty five nine nine dollar price point with the i nine thirteen nine eighty h x and a forty eighty, I think you're just getting a ton of value, and um, and that's where I think this this GE model really shines. The forty ninety version being like thirty seven ninety nine. That's too much for what we're offering in this laptop. I think that one needs to be priced more like thirty-four hundred to get the i9 with a with a forty-ninety um, at the most. I think right now it's like four hundred dollars too much. So uh, so those are my thoughts right now, and I honestly, maybe even down to thirty-two hundred eventually for the forty-ninety version for it to be competitive with other laptops on the market in the space. Um, all right, checking out chat before we end the stream. Do you think the temp results will be the same with the, all the Raiders versions? Um, I, do, I do agree that the Legion Pro 7i had better temps. I think the cooling system in the Legion Pro 7i is a little bit better than what we saw here. Um, but I think, I think it's gonna be good. Christopher YouTube says, have you seen the Lenovo 9i? Yes, I ordered one, it was almost delivered today. I'll be doing a live stream of the Legion 9i early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday. Um, did you try the laptop fan stand? If so, did it help? Yes, I'm sure it would help, but we did not try it on the specific laptop. Um, hope to see August released GE68 RTX 4090 version review soon. Um, Primera Pro, I would check out the GP68 uh, 4080 review that I did because that's going to have a lot of similar similarities being a 175 watt RTX 4080 in that laptop. So um, you'd have to, you can look at least reference that, but um, yeah, it would be a little bit different because it might have a little more premium features like better thermal paste or fan system or, or what, whatnot. Um, Eric says, what's your opinion on laptop skins? I think laptop skins are great for reducing uh, scratches on your laptop system. Otherwise, it's just upgrading the coolness factor if you find a laptop skin that you really love. So, but it does help protect the laptop just a little bit from scratching. So when you go to resell it, you can peel the skin off and sell it and say, hey, look, it looks brand new because there's no scratches on it or whatever. So, um, your PC Prime says, I like how you remember all the details of the laptops as always, amazing review. Yeah, thank you so much. I try to recap everything that we've discovered about the laptop during the review. I hope this is helpful to everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like the, the live stream, the, this review if you, if you can, and subscribe for more awesome content. I will see you in the next one, early next week, Legion 9i, and then also MSI Bravo 15 with a 4060, I believe is also coming next week, hopefully. Okay, peace out, see you in the next